All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a one more just enthralling episode of Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing. Uh, I am, of course, See Nothing, your kind of host, uh, and I'm here avoiding getting my teeth smashed in by the microphone. With me, as always, is Mr. Phil. Yep, hello. How's it going? Good. How's it going? And then to my left, we have a returning guest, young Zach Sandry. Zach, welcome. Uh, thanks. It's great to be here, guys. Perfect. Good. And to his left is everyone's favorite, John. Say nothing. Welcome back to the show. We've missed you. Hey, everybody. All right. And without further ado, uh, Mr. Phil, I believe you had some announcements. Oh, yeah. So um, how's everybody's week been? How's everyone's everything? Or since w- since we've last done a show, what, what it's been like a month, right? Something like that. Yeah. Has anyone had anything good happen to them? Uh, any any crazy? Well, that, that's a really sad silence. <laughs> 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 that's uh, what I was hoping for. Is that right? No, but uh, um, so yeah, I'd, I'm proud to announce that um, you know, I'm. Uh, of course, you guys know. For those of you who don't know, you know, I'm I'm 30. I, I used to uh, screw around a lot, and I'm I'm you know now I don't. I, it's not. It's finally hitting me that you know finally, I'm, a, went from being you know just this fuck around party guy to now like. Being a father figure. Oh my God, Kelly's ra- pregnant. Raising family. Uh, no, no. Oh. I, I was gonna. Uh, <laughs> the thing I'm proud of is, so I'm trying to. Y- the the point is, you know, I'm like I'm trying to go and do everything along the right route. I'm raising a family, owning a house, trying to sort of build this life for myself. And in the same week, I'm proud to announce that I've been legally, uh, well, on paper. Uh, accused of shooting up my workplace and and murdering someone. That is exciting. Oh, two twi- twice in the w- same week. That sounds so, like you've so really so got so things I feel like put I'm together. A man, you know? Yeah, that's good. No, right? you're making a lot of progress. It yeah, sounds like right? that's good. So <laughs> yeah, can, I, uh, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so here's um, at work. Uh, you know the thing. I'm I'm sure everyone knows it sucks because. It's different bequ- between like the friends that you have outside of work and at work. You know, the people at work are sort of like, okay, I'll be friends with you because you're the piece of shit I got to deal with for eight hours. Sure. A day. It's not really somebody you'd spend the rest of your life with or whatever. But um, so it all start. Well, so Unless I'll, s- I'll start off with the, the ac- right accusation. Driver. I got I got taken into a interrogation room. With my boss and like a CEO of the company. Most companies have those interrogation rooms, yeah. Yeah, and and they're like, uh, well, Phil, do you have anything to say to us? I'm like, I I don't know. I it's Friday. I'm going to a concert, feeling kind of good. Don't really want to be in this interrogation room. And they're like, well, do you think there's anything that you said that might have been a sexual comment? <laughs> or and uh, that's where that's that's uh, you know, issue A. That's issue A. And is d- there anything? And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? And ha- have I told you about? Uh, I've told you about the uh, the Kate version of my work, the Meredith. Yes. Yeah. You've mentioned to me. I don't know if these gentlemen have had the pleasure. Yeah. There's this uh, chick I work with who she kind of she I think she's like 20, but she looks and uh, and and she literally looks exactly like Meredith from The Office, and her name's Meredith. She like that cottage cheese skin. <laughs> and and uh, just just red when it's cold. Like uh, any anyways, she used this uh, really hipster chick. She gets really uh, mad at me when I get things wrong because I tend to be clueless in most situations. So she was like getting mad at me for uh, I was calling her viola, a violin. And then like once I realized she was getting mad at it, I'd just be like, oh yeah. So how's those saxophone lessons going? Oh, how's those clarinet lessons going? You know, just kind of mess with her. So. And I kept asking my buddy who goes hunting the uh, the gun nut, like, "Are you sure everything's okay? Because she's got a crush on him." It's like, "Oh yeah, she's hu- he's." Wait she's a minute, the the hipster girl has a crush on the on the, the alt right guy. Yeah. What, what? It's alt right and alt left getting back together. You know, that's, that's, it doesn't that make any like a sense. Terrifying to me. marriage. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I sometimes I feel like they're both uh, trying to get information out of each other. You know, <laughs> playing the long con. But uh, uh, opposites attract. Yeah. So so what happened is she had a um pin on I, I it was two people who reported me. 
There's this Josh kid who... You made the sexual comment too? Well, uh, sort of. I wouldn't say directly to him because he's like he's the guy who walks like a giraffe and his tits hang down to his belt. But he's very cute. He's no, he's not cute. Oh. He uh, <laughs> his he looks like he just fell through like a barrel of hot wax. Like his just balding and I don't it's I don't know. And then his tits flapping down, and he's like really desperately trying to be friends with me. And as be I've I've been nice to him to this point, and uh, we were having a conversation. And as usual, uh, this other worker interrupted our conversation. She interrupts every conversation. It's like being with Gavin. I'd never seen it before. Like, like I'm talking to you guys right now, and I'd just be like, "Oh, hey, where's the cheese? Oh, what about the crackers? Just ran like, just random shit." I'd be talking about like, "Oh, hey, Joe, the gonna." I'm like, "Hey, man. Uh, so how do I go about going hunting with you? Oh, look at my tortilla. It looks like a face. Ha ha ha." I'm like, <laughs> "Shut the fuck up. Like, it's not even close to being work related." And definitely further away from being funny or or you know pertaining to this conversation but you sexually harassed her yeah she um i would just keep busting her balls like um one of the things that the main thing that made her snap was one day it was it was the friday um she kept interrupting everybody and uh i was like all right hey guys who's getting fucked up this weekend they're like well we all are i'm like no who's getting fucked up right now because shots on me we're going to take a shot every time Meredith interrupts us, but be careful because we might get alcohol poisoning. And she just like lost it. She got really offended by that. Um, but the thing, so she's like, "Oh, well, what leverage do I have here? What can you not do at work? Race, sexually, like you know, explicit or threat." So uh, she had a pin of I think what's her name, Frito Kylie. The oh, Frida Kahlo. Kahlo. I have. Do you know who this is, John? No, I don't know. Oh, you gotta bend the mic. Wait, it's the butthole mic, man. It it doesn't work though. Yeah, I don't know who she is. Yeah, well, I don't I don't know either, and I don't know why the hell I would ever fucking hear of her. Like, she's she's a Spanish painter, and is like huge in the like feminist movement. So like, oh. she's like a a big like feminist and symbol. And, okay, and she had a rowdy love affair with Lev Trotsky. Of okay, the Bolshevik Revolution. Okay. Well, that's a better explanation than she gave me because all she said was, oh, hey, she really uh, was a, an amazing painter in the communist movement and she really wanted to get her paint out there. She couldn't promote it because of all these dictators holding it back and, and sort of suppressing the art world. So she fucked all these guys to get to the top. I'm like, well, that kind of sounds like a whore to me, not a painter. And that apparently is sexual harassment, calling a painter a whore. And on a quick side note, I don't know if this is true or Sandri, if you know, but it was my understanding that Frida Kahlo was very, very sickly. And I don't know if she had polio, but I think that she was wheelchair bound for a lot of her life. And I have heard of her reputation as being a bit of a philanderer, like sleeping around. Yeah. And just like the physical description I hear of her doesn't match with that, you know, like sexually liberated, like cougar or what have you. Yeah. Um, so I, that's always been my confusion. So, do you have any insights, Sandry? Um, I I can't say much to that. I've I've heard the same things, but I don't have any. You know, I don't have any real evidence to back that up. I haven't looked a ton into it, it, Frida Kahlo. But. It, it it sounds to me like oh, this person's cool now, so everyone's gonna like her, but we don't really know about her. Kind of like the way you described nihilism that one episode. <laughs> Nobody really knows the definition. <laughs> yeah, but just, we're all uh, into it. But uh, but the, you know the funniest part about nihilism though is not knowing the definition is kind of the definition of nihilism. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, think about that. The that. food for thought. Yeah, no kidding. So, anyway, so, you call so Frida Kahlo a whore. Yeah, and that's considered, I guess, sexual harassment for using the word whore because the way she made it seem is that I called her a whore for um, wearing the pin, which I would not have done that. I mean, but she was trying to look for blow and fuck everyone on during the work party. So we, either way... That accusation might have been true, but I didn't say it. But I know that it, it it could have worked out either way is what I'm trying to say. But I did not call her a whore. Anyways, the next thing was. So, so you explain all this to the nice people in the interrogation room. Like, no, no, I wasn't yeah, yeah. calling her a whore. I was calling Frida Kahlo a whore. Yeah. No, that's that's really how it went. Okay. And then, and then they're like, all right, we got that part over. Now we're going to go to the more <laughs> concerning issue, which is issue B. Have you ever mentioned that you're going to bring a gun to work and shoot up the place? 
And of I'm course like, I have. <laughs> Well, it was my water pistol. It was going to be filled with non-toxic Tabasco. Right. You know? like, do you work here? Of course I want to shoot everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, I was like, no, I, I don't know why anybody would ever say that because, and I, and the, one, the two things that I remembered, one, I went up to Josh one day and I was like, how's your day going? He goes, oh, it's okay. I go, oh, okay. Because you look pretty stressed out. You never go in here and I'm like, fuck, man, I just hate everyone. Which I guess is signaling that I'm going to shoot up the place, and then and then, pretty much for two hours for the rest of that whole interrogation, they're just like, "You sure, Phil? You don't need the suicide hotline. We actually have an employee stress hotline that we're going to email you, even if even if you're not stressed out. Do you have all right, all right, Phil. Let, let's just backtrack. You're a family man, <laughs> right? You're, you're happy here. You wear, you wear bright colors usually, right? So you're not going to shoot us up, right? You know, I'm like, no, dude, like. This whole fucking thing, like, I was talking, I was talking to the gun nut about going hunting. Did you refer to him as the gun nut? No, no. They're like, oh, sure, we love that crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I. Well, no, I, I don't want to use his name. For, if, from if he's a gun nut, I've, I've heard about uh, him on the uh, previously. It seems like they should be more more concerned with with his actions yeah. than uh, anything you're gonna do. Well, yeah, well, I mean. I don't know, man. It's just, it was fucking ridiculous. I can't believe, like, people, not to mention, everybody's talking about that Florida shit right now, you know? Well, yeah, it's a, it's definitely a hot topic. Like, it, 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 show, it shows you how much media can affect that, you know? I mean, I, I don't know. So so that's what I'm proud of, that I've, yeah. You don't think that it was that uh, metalhead guy? No, no, it wasn't. No, it definitely was because I don't even I don't see him every single day. I know I know for sure it was her because I'm friends with everybody else in my row, and I'm like, they were like, "Oh, you were gone for two, three hours. Where were you? Did you have an episode?" Because I get stressed out, and they thought I either had a panic attack or a seizure. I'm like, you know, I didn't want to. You're not supposed to mention it because it's the boss. I'm like, oh no, I had a messed up car battery. Oh, that's funny because Meredith turned around and she's like, "He's had a meeting. Don't worry, we'll see if he's back." Like, oh, okay. So this little brat slacktivist wants to fucking, like, ruin someone's life because, I don't know. Because you insulted her favorite artist. Yep. I think that's what it, I don't know. It's it, Well, the thing is, every day I'm just busting balls, and then I'll ask, hey. I even asked her a few times. I'm like, hey, if I'm too mean, let me know. Because oftentimes I offend people, and they don't let me know. And I'm, not, I'm, I'm harmless. Like, I, I won't be offended. Like, just tell me to my face, you're being a dickhead. Shut up. And she's like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. So I just every day kept con- one one week. She fucking thought she could get to work on two dollars of gas. So she gets to work, then goes out to lunch, breaks down like the first fucking two feet, and has nobody to help her push the car. So of course her love, the gun nut, helps her out. Then she then she doesn't mention to anybody that half the gas that she bought. You know, like say she bought, I don't know, five dollars of gas to fill up to come back to work. About three dollars of it spilled on her clothes, so we're all getting a headache in our fucking cubicle row because, you know, she smells like you could flick a fucking match, and right there you got a Buddhist protest, you know, Tiananmen Square. <laughs> so, I don't know, man, but so yeah, so that, and then I would bust about because like we had fajita day, employee appreciation. So I was Aww. like, yeah, I think since you're new, Meredith, you should pick it, pick it up, you know. uh but make sure you have a full tank, and and even when you bring them back, I'll let you prance around with your viola, you know, like just shit like that. I don't know. I don't think it's too mean or a, or or threat. How does how does prancing around with your viola bring up bringing a gun to work? You know what I mean? I'm not getting any of this. You know, that's just the white collar world. Yeah, you know? man. Seems like a pretty hefty accusation. Yeah. Well, you know what really sucks is what my company told me. They're like, unfortunately, here. You're guilty until proven innocent. So technically, I could, I could, I could accuse anybody of that. I could just. Be, Meredith has a bazooka in her backpack. It's a vegan bazooka, but she's gonna shoot it up. You know. Don't do that. No, no, I definitely <laughs> won't. Yeah, I, I, would, right, I would avoid page. doing that. Yeah. No, no, I definitely won't do. That. I, 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 w- I wouldn't even. I mean, I don't know. I think I'm changing in the way, like, uh. I do think before I speak recently, and I'm not trying to ruin anybody's life, so I don't think a fucking comment should uh, fuck up somebody's financial status. I don't know. Wait, say that again? 
you don't think a comment should like as in as in as in if like somebody they lose said, their job? Yeah, yeah, like like if somebody is being a, a you know, a nuisance at work, they shouldn't be messing up their financial life because you know, it's what I'm saying is if somebody bothers you, why don't you just approach them and let them know, you know? Why don't you just or just avoid that person? I don't know. How do you guys feel? Yeah. I don't know. I'm with Have you. Have you guys ever had any situation like that before? Not really, no. I have not. You mean you guys haven't been accused of shooting up the place? <laughs> I uh, I got in trouble once in middle school for writing uh, emo poetry. It was all satire. Yeah. But one of them was called like Graveyard Crying. And everyone in my English class at the time was gathering around reading it. We were all laughing. Yeah. The teacher comes up. She's like, oh, what are you guys laughing about? And we're like, nothing, Miss Sebo. Don't worry about it, Miss Sebo. And she says, no, I can take a joke. And so I let her read this poem, which is all about, like, slitting your wrist and, like, hating your parents and everything. And I wrote it completely as a joke. She was it reads beautiful? It. I, I thought it was really powerful stuff. Um, Do you still remember it? No. No, I wish. Um, it was just in, like, a spiral-bound notebook. It was great. Everyone, I was the hero of class. Miss Sebo reads it, and she puts it down. She looks at me, and she says, Bill, this is sick. And I was like, uh, uh, no, it's a joke. And she's like, no, this is not funny. This is sick. And I was like, okay, sorry, Miss Sebo. It was in middle school? <laughs> yeah. So the next day in homeroom, Mr. Miller, my homeroom teacher, he's like, Bill, can I see you in the hallway, please? And I was like, oh, great. And he's like, gets down on like one knee, like, hey, sport, how's it going? How are things at home? <laughs> And I was like, did Miss fucking Sebo talk to you? And he's like, I can't say that. And I was like, Mr. Miller, it was a joke that she didn't understand. Like, I'm completely fine. And he looks at me, he's like, you're sure? And I was like, yeah, I'm sure. I don't talk to strangers. <laughs> right? <laughs> and he was like, well, okay. And, like, that was the end of it. Yeah. So now, like, uh, just for everyone out there and everyone here at the table, like, don't tell Mrs. Sebo any jokes because she doesn't get it. Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah. What the fuck, man? You know, in uh, in high school, I was pretty extensively bullied, and at one oh. point, I <laughs> sorry, wow, that, a little bit of a downer, but at one point, um, you shut up the school. There was no they, but there there was a joke that that I wasn't really in on or or a fan of, but they <coughs> they you know every year for the yearbook you had like most likely to sort of stuff, mm -hmm. and a bunch of people said that I was most likely to shoot up the school mm -hmm. just because of the, how they had like, that in your yearbook. No, 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 no. Like as a as a joke oh. outside of that. Like I heard people like saying that shit just oh, because like <laughs> that because they recognized how extensively bullied I was and yeah. that I would that like they assumed that I wished them harm. Which like in a weird way I do. Like like I want to the, like day. illness to befall some of them, but like I'm not gonna go shoot anybody. Yeah. Well now you're just lacking motivation. <laughs> I'll t I'll I'm, I'm, gl I'm I'm glad to be uh, uh, an underachiever on that but end uh, of the results. spectrum. Sandry, dream it and then be it. Well, at least you're not piss bottle Phil or the biscuit bandit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The bottle and the bus, Phil. Ha ha ha. The uh, fuck, man. In uh my high school yearbook, they did superlatives, you know, like most likely like best dressed shit yeah. like that, and one of them was. Most likely to be late to graduation. And the joke that was going around high school was that Paige was going to be most likely to be late for graduation. Because a little background information, Paige had died in a drunk driving incident a few months prior. Oh. So talk about uh. like dark shit. Yeah. Yeah. Kids, that's, the kids are assholes. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty fucking dark. That's uh, Hillary Accurate. Clinton's high school. Oh. So that's, yeah. you know, that's the sort of caliber of... That sounds uh, like something she'd say. <laughs> that is just... The wit has stayed with the school. Yeah. Even since her time. But it sounds like things are going really well for you at work. Yeah, man. So life is good Everything's in general? Um, well, the, the thing that was more awkward is Friday, we had a whirly ball party for the whole company. Nice. And I am usually the guy who drives uh, a lot of the people. There's uh, And this guy, James... We went together to Josh's to smoke up the Josh flabby tits, and he um that whole like after that whole incident, all of Friday, 
I kept J- like James was like the middleman, and he's like, "So you going to you going to Whirly Ball today?" I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. Um, you want to come with? It's like, yeah, I was gonna go ask Josh, and James isn't aware of any of this. I'm like, yeah, ask him if he wants to come. If he wants me to go back to where he lives and know where he lives, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's, sure, he's like, yeah. oh, Josh said he's not going. I'm like, oh, that's. F-. And then like, I pass by Josh on the way to the bathroom, and I'm just like staring at his eyes, smiling all nice. <laughs> And he's like desperately trying to avoid me. You could see, like, he's actually sweating. At the, I'm like, oh yeah, how's it going, Josh? And instead of saying like, oh, it's okay, you know, nice day. Are you going to the whirly ball thing? I'm kind of on the fence. I might go. You need a ride? No, I, I'm I'm on the fence too, man. S- same boat, you know. And like all day, I just kept going back and forth. All right, James, tell Josh that I am going, and I'm giving you guys a ride. And then, and then Josh, oh yeah, no, I don't think I'm going anymore. And just back and forth. So I think they thought I was going to go, but then I ended up going to Chinese food night mm. with Kelly's parents. But yeah, I feel like uh, whirly ball is is an activity that that they don't want to do. That they just accused of uh, yeah, lying. yeah, you know, right. The, like not the not the game to to go do after that. Yeah, right. What the f- play some laser tag? Get them in the dark. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, don't. <laughs> Don't invite him to laser tag, right? <laughs> oh, that's Phil. Don't talk to him. Uh, yeah, dude, paintballing. Right. Sh- paintballing. No, that, that shit. Just ask before anybody got any marbles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that shit was so ridiculous. I don't know. But um, I ended up going to see that show, uh, Watain. Right here. This poster right here. Uh, I, I tried inviting um, John. You said you didn't really like him. Yeah, I wasn't uh, a fan. I mean, I listened to like four or five of their songs do you know do you know what songs i typed it in youtube and like the first first few songs that popped up yeah so i don't remember the names though will you sing them for us oh man was it was it a video with them covered in black and blood and in the woods i didn't watch the video i plugged it in my down man yeah (laughs) (laughs) right that's all of them (laughs) yeah that's your greatest hits album yep no it it, well and it ended up I'm not kidding. It ended up being like the nuttiest fucking show I ever went to. I literally like almost had an anxiety attack because I, I may have started to get food. Po- I actually, I think I got the food poisoning from the blood because yeah, they were <laughs> cause, cause, cause I, I dude, I, I used the Q-tip that night and there was blood in my ear from, yeah, the, at the show they, um, they s- were setting up the stage and they, um, imp- they had like lamb's heads, you know, from the deli impaled on like five different crosses that were welded upside down on the stage and real lamb's heads yeah real lamb's heads <laughs> it, there were people trying to one of them was like yeah the whole time just one tongue hanging out and everybody kept trying to crowd surf and rip it out because literally if you land if you landed on the stage you'd get impaled on one of the like metal things because there, yeah the, all the security were like as soon there was maybe like one or two people that tried crowd surfing and it was just like some really obese metalhead trying to be funny like oh these guys are gonna hold me up huh and they didn't make it they, they we wouldn't be able to lift them up to get impaled on but anyways I uh I took my phone out and I'm like trying to record and right when I try to record he filled up a skull full of like pigs or cow's blood threw it right at me like all over my face all over I could I could show you pictures later but I was comp- the whole front row was completely covered in blood because they did it like five different times and it smells like steak and you like kind of makes your eyes itch, you know? <laughs> <laughs> sure. And yeah, it was uh, it was really the, the the mosh pit was super fucking nuts. Like there were just people. There was one guy that I saw the week before when Ross took me to a show for free, uh, Enslaved and Wolves of the Throne Room, where it, it, it's it's this little Mexican guy. He's like four feet tall and he just runs up to everyone with his rings and goes satanico and grabs them by the throat and everybody's like get the fuck away from but he he is he was like the strongest fucking guy in there he's like am i in the wrong place what the fuck 2018 is pussies like (laughs) and yeah i got my face thrown into the back of some guy's head my face was swollen and i couldn't talk right we ended up meeting the band the drummer was really nice you know so how was our show was it was it too loud? Uh huh. And where where was it? Metro. Metro, yeah. You think they'll be allowed back? I don't. I don't know. They, it's weird because An- Antifa goes after them every fucking year, and they played uh, the, the last time they were here. They played Reggie's, 
And speaking of that, a band that I was going to see in two weeks, Take, which is from Sweden, which is one of the main like mayhem bands, they got fucking banned. They canceled their whole fucking tour. Antifa protested Bottom Lodge. I'm not going to get into that shit because that's fucking ridiculous. But the, the long story short of that was that, uh, like I said before, none of these bands, you know, th- none of them are into politics or anything. When they played Germany, that band Take, they painted a swastika on their chest because it's illegal to do that in Germany. So they're kind of like fucking with them. When they interviewed them, they're like, oh, why are you guys doing this? Are you guys fucking Nazis? And we're like, no. Why We have sold out shows in Israel. Why aren't we doing that there? Because we're kind of like going to you know, Germany and fucking with them because, oh, this is illegal here. We'll do this here. I don't know. It'd be like going to America and wiping your ass with a flag like Marilyn Manson did, you know? So, yeah, they got... Their whole fucking tour got canceled. I, I was so pissed because cause I'm like, I mean, who can say that that has happened to? Oh, I got tickets for this band. I can't see them because of some protest, you know, that like rarely, that's like some 60s shit, you know? Yeah, that's a pretty touchy move, though, to to, to put swastikas on your chest yeah. and go to I, dirt. Yeah, like yeah, I get questionable I get judgment. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know I would never do that shit. I know I don't, I would not want him to do that shit at the show. But it's like, man, I want to. I want if if you don't like the show, then just don't go. I mean, that's just I don't know. That's just the way I see it. It's like I don't know. I could be offended by I don't. You, you hear about how like it's like white people getting beat up at Black Panther shows. I think it's maybe a rumor because they're wearing dashikis to the show. <laughs> the, 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 um, the movie? Yeah. I didn't hear about that. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah the, there there, there was a bunch of times where um I guess there was a. Although, the, again, d- <laughs> questionable judgment of a, a white dude wearing a dashiki to uh, anywhere at any time. I, I wore one to work. But that's <laughs> cool. Yeah. But I didn't know it was like an African tribal thing. I, 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 I literally I literally wore it because uh, when I was in like my psych band, I thought, I'm like, oh, fuck, that's a really cool trippy design. And I bought one. And then I just wore it to work. And yeah, a lot of, a lot of people were staring at me like, what the fuck is this guy doing, you know? But I didn't know it was like, uh, I didn't know it was like, no, this is our shit. You can't wear this. I don't know. I, I think that's kind of stupid, you know, like wear whatever the fuck you want. I don't know. I, I don't know how you guys feel about that. It, it, I think it depends. Like, yeah, like I, I agree that sometimes like the idea of like appropriation goes a little bit too far. Like, cause you create the idea of us and them when you, when you have like certain things that can only be specifically used by, yeah. you know, like a certain selection of people however gen- like wearing a wearing a dashiki it depends you have to be seriously wearing a dashiki you can't like you can't have it as some sort of like joke or statement because then like that it, i think it's it kind of touchy there yeah right so wearing it to the movie theaters for black panther yeah questionable judgment no it was just people like uh people like meredith like some activists trying to be like yeah i'm with you guys and i'm like gonna help you guys out by protest by wearing a dashiki to black panther or something i don't know i i think it could be kind of patronizing yeah i mean i don't know but i wouldn't do it yeah i don't really i guess i don't I'm really not, have no, that I'm much not of a problem that with it <laughs> you want we want you want mine <laughs> <laughs> no I, I, that's okay i i don't need a dashiki i only wear it around the house with the blinds closed and right. pretend <laughs> i have my own black panther crew here but yeah so so that's what happened at one day <laughs> yeah that's uh we got covered in blood then we ended up meeting the band the singer was obviously a very pissed off and very dedicated satanist can i take a picture with you uh, i guess you know <laughs> So, but uh, the drummer was really cool, but um, sorry, he's such a grump. I don't know. He's just <laughs> <laughs> he never likes our fans. <coughs> I tell him to get it out by throwing more blood, but it's never enough. They actually had a guy come like uh, like like you know when you go on tour, you got like oh the guys who you know connect all the chords and then the guys who like break down the drum set they yeah. actually had a guy who just mops the blood up <laughs> <laughs> like, <not even. laughs> what is that job description <laughs> yeah but it, because um um when we were waiting to meet the band they have uh it's called a trident i think it's also the symbol for pisces it's like it's just like yeah. a 
I know what you're talking about. Like, yeah, it's a pitchfork with a circle on the handle. And they have that where they hang their like band logo on. And I wanted to take a picture with it while they were carrying everything out. And um, <laughs> they just, they had this fucking like cart that looked like it was from Pilgrim times. Just, oh, oh yeah, because all around the drum set, they have all these spines and ribs of animals around it. Uh, so they just threw all these in this into this Pilgrim cart along with the lamb's heads. And I'm like, man, why the fuck didn't you throw the heads into out into the crowd? That's going to rot in one night, you know? But it seems like that kind of is the theme they're going for, though. Yeah. It's just like rotting flesh. Yeah. But point is, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, I'm taking a break from this shit because uh, this is kind of fucked up. I never. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, crazy. Uh, There's just one point in the pit where I'm like recording. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm this is who I am at 30 years old. I'm getting blood sprayed on me <laughs> watching animals get ripped apart. And fucking moshing with these people who, you know, got a head growing out of their neck, like, who are who are still in high school mentally. You know, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? So I got to take that. I got to take a break from that. Have you told Ross? I haven't. And that's that's the part that I was trying to get, like, it's going to be stressful. No, Phil Metal! You know, like. You're selling out, man. Yeah. I don't know, man. Anyway. Well, Slayer's coming up, so that's going to be fun. Yeah. Bill, you're going, right? Yes, sir. And Jenny Baker's going. Woo! Oh, yeah. Are you guys going to go at it in the mosh pit? You know, I hadn't thought of it. Play chicken That's into the middle of the garbage fire. What, I, what I'm hoping for is a casual, hey, Bill, how are you? I would settle for that. No, no fucking in the mosh pit. No, you know, no oh, garbage no, I, I, meant, I meant just uh, just moshing at each other. Oh, you're probably sick. not. No, I'm probably just going <laughs> to... What did you think I meant go at it? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> you know, the English language. Double entendres. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, she'll be there. I'll be there. Sparks will fly. Yeah. Maybe, or whatever. I, I don't think know. It's more romantic than Slayer. No, right? <laughs> Dude, just wait till Anthrax comes on. We'll gaze lovingly at each other. Like, they're playing our song. Um... But yeah, no, that should be good. Except it's at Tinley Park, which quite the drive. Quite yeah, quite the drive. It's like almost is that that's it's like an hour and a half, right? right? Yeah, it's hour and a half for for me. So, do you see? Um, Dead Kennedys are coming, but really? it's without Jello. Oh, so which I think is really shitty because they're playing with like some new singer, and I'm like, isn't Jello kind of Dead Kennedys? To be honest, like, yeah. Like what the fuck? Who's gonna take that? And I think they actually are desperate because, um, you know how they have like all these updated uh, effects on Facebook where like, oh hey, rate this. How are you feeling today? What would you do if a snowflake landed on your belly button? They just have these random questions or polls, you know. So the Dead Kennedys page has a poll: What songs do you most want to hear on this tour? Like they're desperately trying to like. You know, cater to whatever fucking crowd is okay with Jello not being there. Yeah. So. Uh, people are going to go not knowing that Jello is not going to be there and they're going to be pissed. Yeah. Or won't even know the difference. Or Ross is going to go and be like, you know what I told Jello one time? <laughs> Fuck the Mexicans. Jello loved it. Yeah. Do you remember when Ross got tied to the chair? Yeah. That was some good times, man. That was, I wasn't there for that, but I, I feel like I was, like in spirit. Yeah. I was there taping him to the lawn chair. I'm surprised that that whole crowd let me tape a person to a chair, you know? That was, yeah, dude, we shouldn't be doing this. We're here to get drunk and party. I'm like, yeah, this is part of partying. <laughs> Somebody has to, has to get fucking tied to a chair. All right, get the gag. He's screaming again. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> High school, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to Jesus, be young again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, it, I mean, actually, it was like, what, 10 years ago, so... College years, high school was more. High school kids were assholes. They were that. That was more like, uh, you know, you tie someone to a chair and then like make a saw movie. Yeah, <laughs> that. <laughs> Sandry, going back to your bullying. <laughs> <laughs> Anything? It never, it never got quite that extensive. <laughs> no one, no one like dug a uh, key to the lock into my left eye socket or anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so they weren't too sadistic. No, no, they too had their limits. It was, uh, it was uh, <laughs> much more uh, psychological damage. Sure, <laughs> sure. 
It's, I'm fine. It's fine. Yeah, you can't see the scars. <laughs> Speaking of gruesome shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my favorite transition. Right? All right, yeah. I, take it away, Phil. I I, uh, I had to pop Gavin's tooth out recently, and that was really distasteful. Uh, I don't know why he had it, but it's only his baby teeth, but he had a full filling over the whole tooth. So when you pop it out, it just looked like you know that scene in terminator 2 where they're pulling his bullet slugs out of his chest <laughs> it just looked like a shiny bullet slug covered in blood like <laughs> yeah it's pretty nasty so he had a loose tooth yeah and uh i told him to hold his toothbrush right there and i'll help him out with the rest just close your eyes and i just <laughs> smacked him <laughs> so. you just hit him I just I, I hit the end of the toothbrush. I mean, it, it was really loose. I, okay. I don't think it hurt. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounded like yeah. Just hold it right there. I'll, I'll yeah. slap it out right, of your mouth. Hold the toothbrush. Close your eyes, and then you just fucking deck well, it. Well, well, I didn't want to. You know, I could have. Honestly, I could have. I'm not even kidding. Used pliers since the whole fucking tooth is metal. You know, just do the old Three Stooges like wrench thing. Then you tie tie a string around it. Yeah. Slam the door. Yeah, yeah. Sounds horrible, yeah. by the way. I no. never did that. I didn't either. That sounds just or you, or you, awful. You do it like bam, you tie it to a Ferrari, and then it takes up, right? <laughs> I just, my oh, method was bam. always like, eat an apple, and it'll come out, or eat a plum, and it'll come out. Kelly was telling me that you're just supposed to let it come out. Yeah. Because I guess her mom's a dental assistant, but I'm like, well, that doesn't, that's probably as much knowledge as me, an assistant. Right. It's just somebody handing, <laughs> right? I mean, that's just fucking. Yeah, that's just handing a fucking you know that that mouth vacuum and and all the tools. I mean, you don't really. If I'd be a dental assistant, I wouldn't be paying attention to what I'm handing them. You know? yeah, I would, whatever. My dentist, she does uh, Botox as well. Really? <laughs> so I was there. Yeah, I was there the other day. I'm like, that oh, better be a, that better be the right needle. You know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Tighten yeah, what up if those it, gums, you know? Make oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, what if you like, oh, we got the wrong fluid. That was a Novocaine. You just got Botox in your teeth. Right. <laughs> You're going to have, like, a godfather jaw, you know? Well, Botox is, uh, I can't remember exactly what it, what it does. Like, it, it's used medically for, um, for, like, spasms. So I know my mother actually gets Botox shots for neck spasms. How do, how does a neck spasm work? Like that is it just like it, if like you how like it, her her neck would it looked like she's like twitching or like can't hold it like like doing a night at the Roxbury sort of like more subtly but uh, it doesn't happen anymore because she gets the shots but like, does it is it painful? Uh, not that I'm aware of. You're asking a lot of questions about. She said the mom. needles are fucking huge though. And oh, she's yeah. like, she said it was really daunting the first uh, yeah. first couple times, and now you get used to it. Yeah. No, I'm curious because, like, I don't know that that stuff is weird. Like, I always wonder when when you see somebody who's got um like spasms or uh, just shaky. I, I'm like always wondering, like, does 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 that person get used to that to where it's just like, you know, when you first get something like that, it's got to be depressing or, you know, be like, oh fuck, like this sucks or I got to get this checked out. I wonder if that person. Uh, I, like one of the things we were talking about CBD oil, it said that one of the only very rare, like 0.1% side effects is uh, hand tremors. I, I could know. see that actually. Cause I, I've actually like, uh, from smoking too much weed before that's kind of happened to me a little bit, like get like twitchy. I think that's more of a nerves thing than, yeah. than an actual like effect. But like, I could see that. I don't think it, I don't think it's not like violent tremors though. Right. Not I mean, that we'll no, find not out. That. Or like, or like it didn't hurt when you got them, right? You just were no, no, no. It was just like twitchy, but you know that. I mean, it could be a myriad of things. You know, it could have just stress, anxiety. Yeah. Could have been an, an epileptic episode that I wasn't. That was like mild. Yeah. Like I, I've had that from having like because I'm yeah we're both up epile- like having too much, like espresso or something holding the cup. Like yeah, it, like I get twitchy like that. I too. think that's everyone though. I don't think that's an epileptic thing. I think if you just have too much caffeine. Yeah. Like you, you get, get really twitchy. shaky. Yeah. Let us have this, Bill. Sorry, yeah, sorry. <laughs> to, you're right. Only epileptics will know what that feeling is like. I'm offended. Oh, I'm pissed off way now. No. <laughs> uh, sorry. Did you just hit it? Did you Did you do some vaping? Yeah, yeah. Uh, may I? Do you want it? To, but it's only CBD, though. It's not gonna make but you lose it. Is it way chill? I think it's chill. It just relaxes your muscles. That um, you know how I was saying on a previous episode where sometimes I, you could get too excited in a conversation. Or you you just get like you're like impatient or something, it chills me out. 
Like I, I don't even talk to anybody at work anymore. But, I'm definitely not the guy who's going to shoot it up, though. Sure, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, you hear that out there, executives? <laughs> like, and he said it. What what flavor is this? It's it's just plain CBD. It's uh, it's the oil. It it just reminds me of like olive oil. Okay. Is it, is that yeah. what it seems like? Yeah. I don't know. You want to try it or anybody? I'm good. Pass it. Sandry's down. Yeah. You don't get you don't get fucked up. You just kind of like your muscles feel relaxed. Yeah, I've heard that it's not supposed to really. Yeah, it's not doesn't get you high. I know one thing this week when I started doing it. The first first day, I was like, you know, another thing for anxiety is running. It does kind of taste like olive oil a little bit. Yeah. Like what, what, one of the best things for uh, anxiety is running a shitload. And uh, I hadn't run in a while, so I'm like, all right, well, we'll see how far this goes. And I ran like mile and a half because Mondays I'm like really tired next day I had a few hits of this so it kind of like relaxed me so I'm like running like oh hey I'm gonna run because I want to work out instead of I'm running because I fucking want to shoot up the place you know sure (laughs) (laughs) so so I took a few hits and I ran like four fucking miles with and and I wasn't tired I was like fuck man if I run any more I'm not gonna be able to fall asleep because my muscles are gonna hurt you know so I don't know. It's been it's been working well. Good. And those violent urges are it's yeah. helping with the violent urges. Yeah, yeah. Good. Now I want to. I don't know. You want to bring sandwiches to everyone at work? Yeah. Shoot, we all, uh, shoot sprinkles and balloons into the air and celebrate that I'm right. no longer a suspect. Yeah, confetti, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whirly ball. Yeah. Whirly ball is so fucking stupid. I gotta say that, like, <laughs> dude. Why the? I wish I wish you could make that complaint. And you and you know what a side rumor in my company is? The reason why they do that, here here's what's weird. The biggest um show the biggest crowd that shows up are like the crazy Wolf of Wall Street coked out salesmen on the floor. Because we kind of call it like, oh, there's the departments and then there's the floor. And it's like if you're on the floor, you're a total douche. So you, sales. Yeah. It's pretty much sales. Yeah. And what we found out is that those people that are on the fl- on like in sales and shit. They have no social life. They never go out. They're there. Tw- my place is open 24-7, so they're just constantly trying to make s- that that's their sex life, too. So there's no spouses allowed at the fucking, at these events because they're like, no, what goes on at Whirly Ball stays at Whirly Ball. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And I'm So not- what, just all the people on the floor are hooking up? Yeah, yeah. There was, there was like two or three guys that... Um, we used to be able to have beer on Fridays, and we can no longer do that because of those two or three guys because they'd fill up a bunch of fucking women. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, they, oh, yeah. holy shit. Now they and get so it out like, so, like so Wolf that, of so Wall Street <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it is. Yeah. And I'm like, well, is that really a solution? No more beer? How about you fire these fuckers? You know? Yeah, wait a minute. You got you got put in a room for calling Frida Kahlo a whore. Yeah. But they're like actually feeling people up. Yeah. Yeah. They're, and, and well, I found out that he's still there because... He's a big earner. So top producer. Yep. Make us more money, we'll let you grab a titty next time. You know? Like that's just the way that's that's the way that company works. That that all all that shit. That that completely blew my mind when they said you're guilty until proven innocent. I mean why not I could just oh hey, this Meredith diddled my butthole last week. I was I was in the middle of a call. It happened. Out in, I, I didn't even do anything to her. I wasn't even. Attra- I don't even attractive butthole down there. You know. <laughs> you could do that. I would love. Shit, don't do that. I, I, I would love to get one of those. It was in an office episode. Those uh, spy pens with the. Oh with, yeah. And put yeah. that in the interrogation room when they talk about diddling my butthole to Meredith. You know. <laughs> like we we got some disturbing reports yeah. recently. Do you uh? You got a family. You depressed? Okay, let's get to the point. Do you like buttholes? Yeah. <laughs> the architects thought we were weird when we said we wanted an interrogation room, but look, here we are using it all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's just the kind of company we run here. Did they like give you a cup of coffee and a donut or No Was it good cop, bad cop? <laughs> <laughs> they have you wired to like the polygraph machine with like the needle yeah. they're looking at all the it was, pages it was, printing. It was out. kinda like Dark Knight. And I was the Joker. There's a guy dressed up as Batman <laughs> who beat the shit out of you. Know I mean? <laughs> and I'm just like, ah! <laughs> you know. Where is he? Oh. I'm not crazy. I'm just ahead of the curve. But I'm not going to shoot up the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe don't compare yourself to the Joker. <laughs> 
I don't know. Maybe they're Heath Ledger fans. They could really respond oh, well. Oh, <laughs> I got to mention. They did give him the suicide prevention. <laughs> <laughs> I got to oh, mention. Oh, I'm sorry, Heath. I, I got to mention this one thing. This, this is fucking hilarious because my manager brought me in there. And when they have these interrogations, they need a third party, which is usually one of the CEOs. There's five CEOs, and they usually get like the top fucking CEO because this is considered a threat. And it was like, there's just moments where I'm just like, okay, these guys are cool, but okay, these guys are out of their fucking mind. Wolf of Wall Street shit. Because first they're saying like, oh, Phil, don't worry. You're fine. You did this, this shooting thing didn't ruin your reputation. You're not a suspect. You're a good old Phil like you used to be before this shooting shit, you know? And I'm like, how do you, like, how can you reassure me? And like, oh, because there's people always complaining. This guy's got bad breath. This guy's always eating with his mouth open. This guy's shooting the place up. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I was like, Those things sure. definitely equate. Just another like, day. I'm like, yeah, why the Bad f- breath, gun threats. So, so what's funny is they brought this third party, the CEO in. And, and I'm, not jo- like, I'm not even exaggerating. These guys are like Wolf Wall Street because he's like, uh, so why are you, um, oh, oh, so you know what happened is, so here's the thing that drove me nuts. And it literally, I'm, I'm not offended. You know, I, I tr- tried being a comedian. Didn't work out well. But the thing that Meredith does, okay, me, Meredith, and the gun nut, we're the only white people in our row. And we, we all get along great. But the thing is, she's one of those people like, I'm white. I'm going to talk about how horrible fucking white people are 24-7. And it's so awkward because what is the rest of the row? Like Dude, the whole row goes silent. I actually, I had, I, I actually just talked about this with, uh, with my roommate yesterday and with one of my friends yesterday. My my roommate, um, one of them is Mexican, the other one is uh, Colombian. Yeah. And I was talking about how because I have I have friends who do that all the time, like the oh like uh, I hate when white people do this, and I hate hearing white people s- try and separate themselves from white people and white culture that they're part of like yeah. i think it's the i think it's the most like bullshit cop out that you can do is be is yeah. like because you're trying to separate yourself you're like oh well you know i don't contribute to that at all I mean, like that's fucking not true like yeah, it's so insincere and fucking like I, yeah like, i mean a, a apologist and i hate it like that bothers the fuck out of me yeah to, to me it's either two things like it's either a way to make up for the guilt or or oh it's just cool to crack white people jokes now so I'm gonna join in like that I don't know that's just the way yeah I there, there's like a lack of sincerity and not, not to, to mention it. the main goal is like we're all supposed to be unified and unite each other what are you like right here what are you doing you know yeah I had that that was that was another thing I touched on is like um because I hate the I hate the denial part of it yeah. it's like you know because uh, I I was talking to uh, my roommate Dimitri and I go. Wait, which one is he? He's he's the Mexican one. All right. Um, <laughs> but I was talking to him, and I I can't remember exactly what was coming up. Is like one of my one of my friends said something about how like she you know she doesn't she doesn't have racist thoughts or whatever. And I'm like, dude, that like that's bullshit. Like, yeah, I like I have racist thoughts, and like I can't do anything about it. But I but the best thing that you can do is recognize it and like make sure that it doesn't like affect the way you act. Yeah. And I'm like, and that's bullshit for anybody to say that they don't like, it's in human nature. Like that's it, it like, is, it's yeah. fine, so I like, I hate that the separation, I hate the, like the denial of it because you don't solve any problems going, Oh, this doesn't happen when it fucking does. You're like, you just have to, you, you have to accept that it happens and then, and then you can like change something about it. Yeah. Sorry. Like I was just, I was, talked about this a bunch of times this weekend no i i I think one of the biggest things um that i've noticed especially from like i saw sebastian maniscalco he tells about a lot of old school jokes about growing up in uh italian bringing up i i I grew up around a shitload of like old school italians so that's kind of like uh you know just a lot of respect a lot of values a lot of family oriented values and and the one thing that i um noticed is that one of the biggest things was there was a lot more tolerance and these days the trend is no it's not tolerance it's acceptance you have to accept me and you have to respect what i like well it's like dude okay uh i don't know bill's got some wine maybe i don't like wine do i have to kiss your ass about how wine is good even though i don't like it you're goddamn right you do like well <laughs> i don't know that that's just the way i'm seeing it like there's certain things that you just got to tolerate when there's somebody has bad breath next to you or shooting up the place you know but i don't know i, d- I didn't mean to get off uh, on that 
what a, whatever political note. But the thing is, which, what what was going on in the row is the the reason why it's significant to this conversation is she was like, I don't know, it was like a personal attack against me. Like it, like you know, I said the whole interruptions. Yeah. It would be like I'd be talking. Um, so somebody came into her and she's like, yeah, I think it's this guy, uh, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, his name's Jay or Jeremy. He uh, he he walked in. He's like, I think jamans are like a Midwest thing. Fuck that shit. I'm from Vegas. We don't have that shit out there. And and she's like, fuck you. You're from Vegas. <laughs> Who yeah. gives a shit? What you- <laughs> yeah. What's 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 hot in Vegas? Wayne Newton. You know, like. <laughs> But a- anyways, uh, so she sa- uh, she says, no, fuck you. Like, fish is great. Have you ever listened to that shit on acid? I'm like, well, I don't li- I don't think jam bands are good. I, I never like that. She's like, no, you got to listen to that shit on acid. And I was just kind of like mocking her, like teasing her, like as we usually. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go dance around in a dress with no shoes and dreads. And then she just turns around and like in the middle of this whole thing, like, it should be illegal for white people to have dreads. Am I right? And she like slaps one of the black people, you know? I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, you know? Dude, Take they, they have to hate her. Yeah. They have so, to fucking right? hate her. So she gets a standing ovation. Right. And yeah. all the, the this, black and, the, and Mexican and Native this. American coworkers you have. And, 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 the, and the, the world changes and we're all, we're all equal now. Thanks, because, Meredith. Yeah, because dreads are illegal for white people. Mm-hmm. It's it's. Uh, by the way, once this hair grows out, I'm not kidding. Promising it on this podcast, I've always wanted to get fucking cornrows, and I'm getting that shit. <laughs> Meredith is going to be so upset with you. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm going to bait that bitch for some more white comments because <laughs> <laughs> because because as soon as I mention that shit, she she uh, I, I forgot no, but it, it happens every day. I forgot what else. I forgot what else there was. I don't know. Oh yeah, um, there one of the uh, one of my black woman employees was asking me. I was showing her the pictures that me and John went skiing. She's like, "Oh, where do you go? How do you do this? Like, where do you rent?" And I'm like, "Well, I didn't know. My friend showed me. You go here. You do the you you know blah blah blah." And she's just like, "Kim, don't go. That's some white bitch shit. Don't fucking do that shit." I'm like, "Wait, Meredith said that?" Yeah. Like like like. Oh my god, she's a she's a fucking monster. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the what? The, anyways, well, so I mentioned that shit, and my boss is. I wonder how many of her friends are black. I'm gonna go ahead and guess three. I'm gonna guess and, none. And She's they all <laughs> sit in that same row with her at work. Yeah. She's from uh, Arlington Heights and recently moved to Chicago. Ooh, so. she's she's gonna have fun. But she's yeah. woke. She's woke. You man. can tell she's woke as fuck. Yeah. So, uh, Sandry's groaning. Sandry's <laughs> scowling. I don't know what the so, mic picked that up. So, please, so, uh, please tell me she didn't move to my neighborhood. I don't. I don't want to see. I don't fucking want to see her around. I yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't want to know. And I'm glad that yeah. And what what ended up happening is they they're like, well, you know, you why didn't you report this, Phil? Don't you know that people can be racist against white people? I'm like, well, it's 2018. Not really. <laughs> It's it's not really I don't I don't think white people have rights two thousand eight I, I don't know that that's kind of like what I said, and then they brought up, well why why do you get on these topics and I'm like well because I used to do stand up comedy, and it didn't work out well, <laughs> <laughs> and then, the, so, and, and then so now I bent to all of it at work yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so the CEO asked he's like oh really you do comedy tell me some of your jokes and I told these two jokes I said oh uh, god I said um. The, oh, hey, w- what's the best part about having an emo kid and taking him into the zoo? When they fall in there, they're, you know, they're probably going to end up shooting themselves. Nobody's going to harm the gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> so now everyone's at ease. Like, yeah. oh, this guy's pretty yeah. Yeah. Cool. Gun Let's humor. Yeah. Let's <laughs> use gun humor <laughs> <laughs> after, being, after being accused yeah, yeah. of wanting to shoot the place up. And, that, and <laughs> the, the, the most thing he laughed at was... Um, the, oh, let's take shots, uh, but nobody get alcohol poisoning because of Meredith, you know, like <laughs> that's, the, that's what made him because because the third and then the third one made him laugh the most. This one they were talking about how recently, I guess, on Netflix, there's a shitload of biopics on serial killers. Yeah, there are like a, a creepy amount of. Those. Yeah. Waco, Charles Manson. Yeah. Waco is kind of interesting, though. Like, I'm not into the serial killer shit, but like. That was cool, right? The Davidson. Yeah, because it's a cult thing, and like I don't know, cults always kind of interested. Me. Yeah, like there's something about them, about you know running them and. Uh, you know, like yeah. the FBI really fucked their shit up, didn't they? Uh, ATF. ATF. And right. yes, the, there's a lot of speculation over who started the fire, who shot first, who yeah. shot, who killed who. 
why like 48 women and children died because of the ATF, why they brought tanks in. They brought tanks in. That's look into some of this shit. Like it gets, you know what I'm going to blame? Pretty fucking heavy. I hear there's a great biopic on Netflix. You, you know what I'm going to blame it on? You, you heard about how they put the speakers on loud, right? They put they they wanted to drive them out of the building, so they oh, put so, shit, they, so they put annoying sounds on the speakers, <laughs> and I'm gonna make up and blame it on country music, just like that <coughs> Vegas shit. You know they blame it on Marilyn Manson on Slayer. We I think that all these shootings we should blame it on country music for once and get rid of that shit. <laughs> as as a pseudo country musician, <laughs> I, don't know, I, don't know, I don't know how I feel about that. Well, I was just joshing, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're part of the problem, uh, Sandra. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, my my music. I wouldn't say my music promotes violence, but it can, it it definitely can drive someone to <laughs> violent acts. Sure. I get into a new mode when I do too much square dancing, man. Oh right. yeah, it'll fry your brain. I don't even need to blow through a harmonic anymore. My throat just becomes that noise, you know, from the from the breathing. No, but so on a li- so on a lighter note, the last joke that this CEO like uh, they were ma- the the group in my row were talking about Dahmer. Is it as light as the kid kills himself in the gorilla pit joke? <laughs> I I don't know. Okay. I really don't. I I I think you guys need to tell me because I I I don't sure. know any better. You know, sure. but um. They were, uh, yeah, they were talking about Dahmer, and I'm like, well, you know, on a lighter note, I, I actually know a lot about him because I did a, I did a book report on him in either eighth grade or freshman year, on his biography, and uh, he actually mentioned that really muscular people taste like filet mignon, and so what I'm trying, I'm not trying to fat shame here, but if you eat a person, eat a muscular person, and it's not about which part of the body, it's about how you tenderize it and season it. It always is, and that's kind of what I told at the at the meeting. And the what? CEO <laughs> <of the> company, <laughs> uh, what the fuck? What was his reaction? <laughs> yeah. Get like, this yeah, man a promotion. I don't even I don't even get where they, the joke they, they, is there. <laughs> no, it really no. It, it I I was just messing around, and, and um, yeah, the boss just nervously smiled, and he's just like, he just you know inhaled really. Okay, Phil. Uh, so here's the line <laughs> of the workplace and here's the kind of jokes you can tell at the workplace here's the kind of stuff you need to leave outside of the workplace but we're good man <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your time so. oh yeah. man so. so good yeah not to shift gears but i've got a few announcements yeah so the biggest news i signed a lease on friday i'm moving out of my parents' house. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. Moving to the beautiful or beautiful neighborhood of Pilsen. Really? Yeah. 20, All right. 21st and Damon, right by the pink line. And uh, my lease starts April 1st. Nice. So it comes visit. Is it your own place? It is. Cool, man. It's Dude, that's uh, that's great. And that's it. It's going to be easier for me to get to you. Like, well, it's funny you should mention that. Um, what is your car situation, Sandry? Uh, I have a vehicle. Do you have a vehicle that might be large enough to transport a queen mattress? Yeah, actually, it should be able to. All right. If, oh. uh, if in, you're needing help. All right, perfect. I knew we brought you on the show today for a reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, that just to butter me up. Uh, uh, exactly to right. Help yeah. you move. Get a few. <laughs> get a few drinks in you, and then. Um, you could always strap it on the roof. I actually did uh, for the box spring for my bed. I did that, and for the whole, uh, I have like this giant ass like wooden Ashley furniture bed frame that I bought off of Craigslist be- like because I trust people uh, too much for like 30 bucks. I went into their apartment and helped them take it apart. I could like, yeah, I- I'm just lucky. I- <laughs> sure. I- I've gotten lucky with some shit that I've sure. done, <laughs> but uh, you can get, it yeah. was like, I'm like, they had like a three story apartment and it was, it was really nice. And like, uh, in, uh, North center. Okay. But, Whatever. Okay. No, you could get lucky Regardless. on Craigslist. I yeah. I wouldn't do anything with bed just because my bed bug experience. Right. Uh, well, it was. I mean, no mattress. It was. It was the frame in a box spring. Yeah. Um, I would not ever buy a, a used mattress off yeah. of Craigslist. I would never buy a used mattress in general. Yeah. That always new. I always wonder, like, new. can you imagine like the liquids that are in fucking like when they do like trailer trash wrestling? <laughs> what, what the fuck are you t- uh, like? Like, are you t- or maybe that's just trailer product boys? <laughs> uh, 
No, and they they just they're like, oh, we're gonna have our own wrestling federation, and they just put up a shitload of mattresses, mattresses on each other for a ring. Yeah, which sucks because when never you never buy middle, used, folks. Yeah, you don't know. You just don't know. Hey, Bill, my friend owns a bar right there. The Barrel. Yeah. Really. Yeah. No shit. That's um. That's probably gonna be my new watering hole if I have any money to spend on luxuries after rent and utilities and things. <laughs> yeah, it's the opposite of your other bar. It's cash only. <laughs> the, oh, weird. But I heard. Wait. I think I. Is it like small, like situated right right by the L stop? Yeah, right across the street. I was literally there like two weekends ago. So you. I, I, okay. Yeah. Okay. So now you know exactly more or less where I live. I'm on 21st. Yeah, there's a gallery there that uh, one of one of my friends she had an art show there. I think I live like what is it called? Right next door. Oh, I can I can't for the life of me remember the name of the gallery. Not gallery cabaret. No, not no, gallery that's cabaret. That's North. that's actually by me. Oh, um, gallery cabaret is I think it's it's still in Logan. I'm pretty sure. I but it's it. like I could walk oh, there. Bucktown maybe. It's either yeah, it's right on the border. Um. It's either, yeah, it's either the edge of Logan or the edge of Bucktown. I was there on Friday. Really? Mm-hmm. They do uh, a six-dollar shot of Jameson and a hams for six dollars. You know, I still have not been there. It, they had, and actually, I'm happy we got on this topic. There was comedy there on Friday night, and one of the comedians kind of reminded me of you, Phil. Really? And not in a super flattering light. So I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> was his name Phil? Are you telling uh, Dahmer no, Jones? No, 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 I think his name was Earl. So he told the joke. Have you guys seen Black Panther? Did you put on your dashikis and go to the theater? No, I have I not have seen not. it. So I haven't seen it either. I don't think you have to see it to understand the joke. But the joke went like, hey, anyone here seen Black Panther? Anyone else think it's weird that in order to get powered up, they drink purple drink? And that's the joke. That that was a joke, <laughs> and it fell flat. And there was not a peep out Dude. of the audience. That joke just died on the operating table. You have to. You that, have that to read the me. room. That offends me that you would think I would tell a joke like that. That, but you and I go back and forth <laughs> with material. Yeah, yeah, and I always say like, <laughs> "Hey, man, like, don't bring up race, like." Because you never know who's going to be in the room and yeah. you don't know how that joke is going to do. And I was like, yes, this, this is what I'm talking about. That's why you don't do this shit. And like fundamentally, I think it was a pretty solidly built joke. But like conventionally or, you know, like it just it didn't land. Yeah. And, and I don't think that joke will ever land. Yeah. I would no. say in the in today's climate. I uh, I think there are certain places where that joke might be really too funny, sure. but uh, <laughs> sure. but for the most part, you got to go to the fringes to find that. Yeah, yeah. Um, my comedy show on Sunday went really well, for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. None of my jokes fell flat. So, fuck did that you, guy. Do you have any new shit? I had two new jokes. No, actually, a lot more than that. But two new jokes that I wrote. Would you, would you like to hear them? Yeah. All right. I don't know if Sandra or John have heard these, so watch out. They're Bill Schmidt originals, and they're fucking funny. Can I have a cigarette? <laughs> sure. That now you're now I'm buttering you up. Uh, yeah. That might be empty. You might have to open this one. Okay. And there's no need to pack the pack or anything. Um, so, last year, my parents planted a lemon tree in the backyard, and this year it died, which begs the question, what do you make when life doesn't give you lemons? <laughs> All right, John's not laughing. That's uh, cool. That's I'm smiling. <laughs> firewood. Is that, is that the whole that, so that so that's one joke. I think it stands on its own without the firewood. But people are like, you need to add something. You need like something to to finish it off. Bring it home. <laughs> Fuck that. I think it's uh, but thank you. <laughs> it I thought without so the <laughs> without yeah. the firewood, but it works with it. And then the other new joke that I couldn't wait to tell on stage is. I'm creating a secret society of pizza lovers. We call ourselves the Lumanati. <laughs> and that joke killed. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's so bad. Fuck you. <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, Don't get me wrong. It's so, so good. Bad. Oh, my. No. It's, uh, it's 
funny. It is funny. It's funny. Phil, laugh. It was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. John, laugh. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so so uh, when's the next one? I don't know. I, and this is something I need to work on. I only perform whenever anyone invites me to perform. Like, hey, come on the showcase. I really don't do any <laughs> marketing for myself. I don't, like... If it makes you feel any better, that's pretty much that's pretty much how I've been skating by on the on the music lately. Yeah, and so, like I don't do any open mics, not because I'm against them. It's just because I'm fucking lazy. And then people will message me like, "Hey, you wanna be on the show?" And I say, "Okay." Then I do shows, and the more people see me, and they're like, "Hey, do you yeah. want do you want to be on the show?" And I say, "Okay." And so I perform every other month or so, and. Because it's fun. For yeah. Well, yeah, and like they invite me in. Who am I yeah. to object? Hey, so. you should. Uh, I I'm now uh, hosting every third Wednesday of the month at uh, the Elbow Room. There, oh, open no mic, shit. which is generally a music open mic. Yeah. But I think we could use some variety. I throw, think so. Uh, throw some. Uh, throw some stand up in there. Certainly. I'll tell my Black Panther purple drink joke. It's gonna kill. Uh, not in that crowd. <laughs> I, w- I would be leery of doing that. Sure, or any crowd. <laughs> or any crowd, yeah. But no, it's like uh, you just feel bad. Like they've got, they're just up on stage, putting it all on the line. Like this is it. I'm an artist, and just people don't care. It's like, oh yeah, I it. It can be painful. I mean, you gotta. It, if you're a performer, you know this, but you know, if you're a performer, you gotta fucking suck it up and deal with deal with shit like that. But oh my god, it can be fucking heartbreaking sometimes. You oh, go yeah. out there and realize that no one gives a shit about what you're doing. Yeah. You know, one's paying attention. People are talking over you, like, oh, oh, someone's on stage. Yeah, you could do that exact same show that you do at a different place and people will be screaming like amazing that you're doing amazing yeah. but you're just at the wrong fucking night with the wrong people yeah with the wrong people wrong yeah wrong time you know it happens I, I can't like that for me it happens a lot oh <laughs> say a tree I'm kidding I, I, yeah I, 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 <laughs> I, I gave up on that because so, it was just like oh here did you need this ashtray Sandra, uh, here oh, yeah, you can pass uh, it over okay. and did you take my lighter uh, it's right here yeah I um yeah I I had to give up on that shit. That's it was too much fucking like dedication to, um just be constantly going out and doing it every time. Plus it's just too much, too much shit on my mind. You know like I, yeah. I don't know I want to focus on like saving up for a fucking, you know trip or or traveling or and and just doing this podcast is enough for me. You know I don't I don't know no. I think kind of like musically I'm, pretty. I don't. See, the, the way I look at it is, if I'm not going to be like touring and trying to get to the top, then there's like no point in it. That's just that's I know that may not be a good way to look at it, but that's just how I look at it. I I kind of get that. I get I get lucky. Uh, my I'll, I'll quickly plug them. Uh, my cousin is in a band called Demetrius and Vince. Uh, they just played a show at Tobacco Road, and they mm-hmm. have tons of stuff and a new CD out. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> get like, yours now at one eight hundred. Yeah, I get um. I get kind of lucky with them because he and I have, uh, you know, a, a little bit of a competition. You know, who's uh, who's better because we play similar styles of music. Yeah, um, we've both played for years and years and years since we were children. Like, uh, that's actually it's like a pretty big drive for me. Oddly, is is like being part of that community and being competitive with other like good players in the area. Mm-hmm. And like that's it's a lot of fun. that's particularly why I like the open mic at um, the Elbow Room because yeah. a lot of it it's actually like stylistically a lot of the people who come through kind of similar so we get to you know we get to actually have that rivalry you get to actually you know look, pick up and learn new techniques and you know talk to these guys um so who's winning you or your cousin right now he's winning Fuck. i i had him for a little bit and i have him on certain things like he can't do any of the under the bridge picking like i can um so like any of the bluegrassy stuff anything more folky bluegrassy like i've got him beat but he's just his his lead work is so good, and his you know his right blues better? work is so. Uh, he he's a better lead. I as far as uh, like song structuring and lyricism, I bet he doesn't have anything on me on that because yeah. he doesn't really do that. Like that's not really his. Like that's not his role in it. Like he doesn't do a ton of that. Whereas yeah. like I do. Like he doesn't really sing. Like. Mm-hmm. So it's a that's a little bit different. I try and when when we go back and forth, it's, we focus mostly on like uh, mechanical stuff. But yeah, yeah. But the, 
to bring it back to like the what I was, I don't know. So I I like doing it. I would love for it to you know make it somewhere, but really it's just like the act of doing. It. I like being on stage. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I like forcing people to listen to me, like <laughs> like a scenario where they can't walk away. <laughs> you know, like tying someone to a chair. Right. Sure. 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 <laughs> but, uh, it, yeah, and. Uh, it it gets hard though, particularly in the winter, because I get down in the winter and like uh, I haven't played, I really haven't played any shows because I was just like, you know, you lose confidence in it and then you get confidence back and you lose confidence and it's just like an up down cycle. It's probably emotionally unhealthy, yeah. but I like it. Pr- probably, yeah. But I'm trying to. It's good. It could be good the therapy. EP out in the next month. So. Where well, you're trying to what? Uh, get the EP out in the next month. Nice. Live on Sawyer. Look for it. <laughs> That eat a dick, Demetrius and Vince. Domino Sandry's coming for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I tell him that every time I see him. I, that uh, I'm writing licks, uh, gunning for him. So you tell him to eat a dick. I, <laughs> I don't generally tell him to eat a dick. No, but I, I'm sure I've said that to him before. Plus, if nothing else, you're taller than Vince. So I am. I am taller than Vince. I think, generally speaking, I'm more friendly than Vince too. Is that um? Have you ever th- thought about like touring outside of Illinois? Oh, I would love to. It's uh, at some point, and I actually um, not really touring, but every time I go somewhere, I I find an open mic to play. Like I, I played an open mic in uh, Toronto a while back, and like uh, at anywhere that I travel to, I bring a guitar. Yeah. I find somewhere where I can sit down and play. You know, whether it be an open mic, whether I can you know book a small show at some you know shithole bar or whatever. Like yeah. I would love to tour like that, but you know, you got to actually have recorded material out, which is what I, you know, which yeah. is really where my shit's lacking. But and you know merch, what I, I realize. Yeah, I was gonna say I realized too, like and merch. I, yeah. I feel like um, it's you know how money people to make money. You, you you know people say like you're making art for the sake of art, not to make money. Like that's well, that's that's usually the idea. But so, art takes money. Exa- exactly. And what I was gonna say is, I think that the the way the world's shifting is. Like being a musician is going to be way more respectable because they're not going to make shit. Like I don't even no. think I don't even like when I go to shows, nobody's fucking buying merch. Well, I you know, it's a it's really and, like and then you're what on Spotify where each track you get like you get ten like, cents a play. Not even like like ten, like a tenth of a cent. Fuck okay, it, no, like that's uh, I I talked about this uh with one of my like a visual artist friend and I go it's you know artists in general like art is expected to be free which is kind of, which is kind of bullshit yeah but like music in particular like music is expected for free like uh, like for the most part yeah like and that like that's I don't know that that seems so bullshit to me because you know at least with at least with visual artists when you're selling a painting like you're selling it in tangible dollars and for reasonable amounts of money like yeah people aren't lowballing you on your oil painting like they're paying what you're asking for it yeah. but like with music it's like oh you want it you want to get started well here come play this this venue you know you're not going to make it we're not going to pay you but you know yeah. it's exposure it's exposure and you get told it's exposure until some people unless, never get told anything else. <laughs> unless, oh, hey, you know this guy? Mm-hmm. Oh, you're the new thing. We're going to fucking put you on every billboard. You're the new thing and make you popular. Yeah, it's like, and, it's a one in a million thing, but it's still, I don't know, I find it worth it. I like doing it. Yeah. I agree. I, did, I, I, I didn't like the the way you were saying the competitiveness. It really drove me at first because I was, um, I think I mentioned before, like I'm a horrible fucking guitarist. But I like am really good at songwriting, at putting together each instrument and how you're gonna fit it into this puzzle piece of an entire song. And honestly, th- a, a lot of time, I'm, I mean, a lot of people have told me that I could be a perfectionist or like, you know, you're either the best or the worst. And oftentimes, I never even. It's crazy because my band broke up 2015, so like th- four years ago, and. I'm like actually listening to my own shit. I'm like, wow, this is actually fucking good. I can't believe I wrote this. And then I listen to shit of bands that I was playing with. I'm like, what the fuck? Where, wh- when am I going to get mine? Sort of, you know, because and, and a lot of it was like I was saying companionship. It's like you got to kiss everybody's ass 
And then finally, when you get like a step ahead, like, oh, you're on a label now. All right, fuck you guys. I was just joking around. You guys suck, you know? Yeah, like it, it does get shitty like that because it it requires some ego. I think a lot in Chicago too. Cause oh, every, it's really the scene. The everybody music go, scene here is really competitive. Yeah. Even and with comedy too and with art. Oh, yeah. Everybody comes to Chicago like this is the hub. It's like it's uh, Chicago, L.A. And, uh, New, and York. New York. Well, Seattle actually, apparently their music scene is getting really big in Seattle. I, grunge, garage rock? Uh, I, I've heard mostly like alternative stuff like... like Almost oh, like that sort of folky alternative. Like they have like a big indie scene out there and stuff. That so they make the soundtrack to Portlandia. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Ju- just about, yeah. <laughs> the the irony of uh, Seattle doing uh, doing the soundtrack to Portlandia, but uh, uh, I would think that genre of music. I think people are really supportive, or would it seem like in Austin? I don't know. I've heard Austin has a really good music scene, but and like Nashville, obviously. But that's different. It's like that kind of music, though. But more, more my style, tailored to my style. Actually, Chicago is really a horrible place for me to be playing the type of music that yeah. I play. I but don't know if that's true. Well, like, it, does, it just doesn't have a bit. There's, there's a crowd a, for everything, but yeah, there's not a huge scene. For well, me. I was just gonna say, like, if the beauty of not having a big scene is that you're a big fish in a small pond. There's that, and and you get that level of uniqueness, like sure, and like cult appeal, you know. Not to bring it back do, to Waco. <laughs> I was going to say, I do, I do have a fascination with cults. That, <laughs> yeah, that, but you know, like, oh, there's, I don't know, like Tonic Room, like places get like bluegrass shows. Yeah, and uh, where well, I think it was actually the Bottom Lounge now is doing like a bluegrass bl- uh, brunch, which I really want to go to. I would love to go to that. Is that an invitation? That that is an invitation. That's a that's pretty close by you too. That's West Loop. There you go. Do you put your music out on uh, YouTube at all? Um, Get some money that way, maybe. I haven't. I haven't. There's a few things that I have on YouTube that are really dated. Uh, that's really what I'm trying to work with now because I'm signed with a a small label that one of uh, what like a, a friend of a friend uh, has a, started a uh, label as a subsidiary of uh, BMI. And uh, signed me on. I have done like I haven't done shit with it. Like we've been in the studio. I got one song out. I didn't like it, so I didn't have him fully release it. And uh, yeah, it, it, right now I'm working on trying to get the EP out there and all that stuff like that. I have a couple songs on like uh, SoundCloud, uh, Domino Sandry on SoundCloud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but really, like I'm, <laughs> I'm shit at marketing. Like yeah. I can't, I can't market myself, and that's a that's really the worst thing. So uh, one of those SoundCloud rappers, Lil Zach. <laughs> yeah, that's with a, that yeah, purple that's drink. A, I, I was thinking about switching switching my career path over to uh, to bluegrass <laughs> rap. That's oh <laughs> my god, that that would be that's an even bigger fish in a small pond. Yeah. <laughs> that'd that'd be the only exactly fish right. in that pond. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I, or would be. I don't actually. I do. bet there's a market for it. I'm sh- I'm sure there is. You know, got that like country sensibility with the urban <laughs> yeah, undertones, dude, dude. I couldn't believe I gotta mention because, like, speaking of like really whatever, just a completely different type of music that doesn't fit with that crowd. Right before Watain opened, mm-hmm. you know, this nightmare of a fucking show. There's this band called Miracore or Miracor. I don't M Y R K Y R, and the the. Everybody in that scene hates this broad, but they don't give her shit at the shows. Like to kind of, well, I, I don't know. Across the world, they hate her, but they don't really show. It's the kind of people that they'll talk shit online, but they want in real life. Because it's pretty much, it's like creepy bass lines, like like early Marilyn Manson shit. But then it's like a chick singing over it, like Enya or Sarah Brightman. Hmm. What? Just like. I don't know, dun, 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 and it's like straight, <laughs> like, and and they call it. I forgot what they call it, but it, apparently it's supposed to sound like you know soul core. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> it, I think she, yeah, she's from uh, Iceland. Yeah, she, she's really. She, I'm not kidding. She, <laughs> I think she's from. Good uh, guess, Bill. She was trying to take that. What what her story is? She was trying to take the story, uh, the the path of like Bjork trying to be like this huge pop model singer and she didn't fucking make it because they're like oh yeah you look really good you sing really well but not good enough for us 
So she's like, oh, okay, then I'm just going to sing weird fucking, you know, wood sounds over black metal and open for, and, and somehow people aren't, you know, aren't going to hate me or something. And I was just, I don't know. Like, still, she's still making money though. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually, I didn't even, rem- I don't know how, I just remember now. I saw her twice and I didn't even remember because it was so fucking bad. She opened <laughs> up like two years ago for uh, Behemoth. Hmm. There's yeah. a fascination with bad music. You know, I saw... Uh, Shiny Toy Guns has has to have been the worst show I've ever seen. Really? What, what is that? Yeah, like? uh, Shiny Toy Guns. I, God, I don't even know how the fuck you would describe. It. Like their recorded music's pretty good. They, I, th- I think part of it though is they were all really fucked up. They were like real fucked up, and they opened for uh, the Dirty Heads. I did not buy tickets to the show. I was taken to the show, but. Uh, there but were two it, local bands is that this, Is this like folk or what, like punk? Um, the Dirty Heads is like uh, like stoner folk, reggae sort of deal. And then Shiny okay. Toy Guns is like uh, like bizarro alternative, almost a little bit like a, with like a mixture of electronica almost a little bit. Okay. But they, I saw the show years ago at House of Blues and they had two two local bands opened. And the local bands were fucking amazing. They were so good, and like, I, like everybody in the audience is like pumped. They're like oh, these two openers; they were phenomenal. And then Shiny Toy Gun stumbles on stage, and it's just fucking awful. Followed by the Dirty Heads, who were so high that they were just like a half step off from each other. <laughs> it just like it would. It just like I think so many people in the audience were just so fuck it like so fucked up that they're like yeah they're like this is the band we came to see we're gonna enjoy it and i'm sitting there like going like oh like you're you are just off enough that it's like tr- that's like fucking scratching at my brain like oh, it was the worst it's like m- aggravating you that like dude just let me go on stage and play your part because you're sucking <laughs> just, right. I, sometimes i i do sometimes get that feeling <laughs> the like oh i like I, w- I want to be doing this instead of you right now. Like you know, you know it's really funny because I just found this out this past Friday. Um, you know, have you guys ever seen these videos of like uh, Metallica smooth jazz version? You know what I'm talking about? They have these they have these YouTube videos where people cover um, something and make it the complete opposite. Sure. Like they make Metallica, they keep the vocals. But the music is like smooth jazz, like <laughs> like elevator Michael, jazz. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, dun, 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 dun. say your prayers into one. Don't forget my son to include everyone. It makes you feel like you're walking through like a like a mall at Christmas time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with yeah. Metallica playing in the background. Yeah, and, and and it's great because they have a lot of bands that you wouldn't. I think Demu Borgir was on there. Miss Shuga was on there. Immortal was on there. And funny thing was Immortal, when they made their, like, uh, I forgot what they said, like, alternative version of Immortal, and it actually sounds like something that Deer Hunter would make, (laughs) just really really indie hipster alternative. I was like, oh, this version sounds good, too. Well, I love some of those, like, those, like, crossover, like, uh, the album Punk Goes Crunk, or, yeah, Punk Goes Crunk. Where it's a bunch of, uh, I mean, this uh, I think this album has to be ten years old. But they took a bunch of like popular rap songs at the time, and a bunch of like a, a bunch of different punk bands like took these rap songs and 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 made them into punk songs. And some of it's like hilarious. Like there's a version of uh, right. what is it? Uh, I see you winding and grinding up on that pole. Fuck, it's gonna. It's not smack that. It's a uh, like some Wait, that, like you and Dad? Uh, huh? Like you and Dad by E40? No. It's uh, I think it's by it's by Akon. And it's like it's one of the like like uh songs about strippers. Yeah. And uh and that who, really narrows it down. Who <laughs> was it who like I don't know, it's um uh, May was and it Mayday? Mayday did it I think or yeah. I can't remember. Mayday so, Parade. Mayday Parade. See, I don't consider that punk though. Yeah, they're they're like, I don't even know. What and you this is something. Did we talk about this? Like what? Pop punk means emo. Yeah. Or emo yeah, means pop yeah. punk. Because my friend told me, or a coworker told me, like, oh, I'm really big into punk. Oh, what are you into? Oh, you know, like, My Chemical Romance and like Mayday Parade and. Yeah. They are. They, that's it's is that like emo, same thing really as Coheed and Cambria. 
Or uh, Taking Back Sunday. I, ta- yeah, Taking take back, back Sunday for sure. I don't yellow know card. about <laughs> Fucking yellow card. But you say punk and I think like the sex has pistols. One arm. Like the Stooges. Yeah. And then when I grew up, I wanted to listen to shit like Sex Pistols. Or the Ramones. You know. Yeah. Or, or uh, I think I really wanted, I liked Casualties when I got into him. But everybody was telling me, no, that's 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 shit. Punk is Green Day and, I don't know, Offspring, you know. Which, Which granted, like, early days, Green Day, like, yeah. they were. They they are the, you know, the even though it was the Sex Pistols who really, get, you know, Sex Pistols and the Ramones who made punk. Mm-hmm. But, like, Green Day really was the, are kind of the poster child, you know, for it. That just because they that made gets it into so. That whole subgenre talk. I feel like I'm with, or, or, like, when, when people uh, get into that, it's like when I'm with Ross talking about metal. No, that's extreme. No, that's <laughs> Viking metal. No, it's not metal. Black. That's hardcore. Yeah. That's, yeah no, that's, that's, a, that's toilet metal. There's so many sub... Like, now there's a, there's a subgenre for... Every band has their own subgenre because no one can accept that sounding a little bit different means that, you know, you're just a different band playing the same SoundCloud style. bluegrass rap. Yeah, that's... <laughs> there. There's your subgenre. Right? <laughs> well, the reason why I mentioned these videos, uh, I didn't... So... I really got sick of the, like the whole Radio Disney version one, but I guess there's this uh, user that makes. They cover songs of uh, they'll play a video of like a live performance and they'll cover that song. Each person is drunk as fuck and off key, and it's fucking <laughs> hilarious. I forgot what song it was, but it was by Hall and Oates. I don't know which one it was, but but I, I don't know who makes that song. It's like. Never gonna give you up. Never oh, gonna it's Rick Astley. Yeah. Okay. So like, picture that song, but but it would just be like, do do do. Never gonna, never give you. No, never gonna give you. Never gonna. It's just everyone's off key, and I I don't know. It sounds really funny. I don't I don't know who the fuck is making these videos, but they're great, because they play the live version, and everybody in the live version, they're like you know thrusting and getting really into it, but the music is completely off. Right. <laughs> Like oh yeah, we're on acid and think we're playing really well. You know, I always I I, I always do wonder about that because you know a uh, fair amount of times I get pretty drunk before going on stage, sure. and I always like uh, I just get bitched at by people like you need to like you need to have more confidence like you can't come off stage and keep asking people how it sounded. I'm like yeah, well I don't know because I blacked out half of it. Right. Like yeah, Wait, I don't do that anymore. Why not? A lot. Uh, uh, yeah, a whiskey or two to loosen up the vocals, and then uh, if you're gonna join the Twenty Seven Club, you really got to step uh, up. I don't want to join it. Ever since uh, Kurt Cobain got into it, it's kind of not the same. Fair enough. Someone told me that um, what's this? You guys into Blind Melon? Yeah, I think I told yeah. you that they're playing again. Well, maybe you told me that, but I was talking with someone at the bar, and he's like, "You know Shannon Hoon, the vocalist for Blind Melon," and I said, "Dude, I fucking love Shannon," and he says, "Yeah, you know he's a part of the Twenty Seven Club." And I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. And I didn't believe him. Yeah, wasn't it 28? He was 28. Yeah. Yeah, so fuck that 27 Club shit. Yeah, fuck that shit. Yeah. No, it's just, it, just because Jimi Hendrix died when he was 27. That's that's the only thing. And Janis Joplin. Uh, and Jim Morrison. And Jim Morrison. <laughs> and Kurt Cobain. <laughs> fuck Kurt Cobain. And Pigpen uh, from The Grateful Dead. And Okay, yes. On, there's a lot of people who died 27. I, I but I, honestly, I, I don't mean it like I'm not making uh whatever biased opinion. But I mean, was Jimi Hendrix really that fucking amazing? Other than like the hit songs, was his other shit really that good? Yes, actually, his his like straight blues stuff. Actually, his, I me personally, I think his psychedelic stuff is the weakest stuff that he does. Like his, the most popular psychedelic shit. Yeah, was the weakest shit that he did. His blues was incredible. It's just no one, no one liked it at the time. Yeah. So like he tried. Uh, so he didn't get big for it at the time. Basically. No, because actually he he tried playing uh, in the United States before he went over to England to play. Yeah. And he got shat on. Wasn't he People, f- uh, like, from England? No. No, no, no. Okay. He he was from uh, the U.S. and he tried making it in the U.S. playing just straight blues, and yeah. he was amazing at it. But people didn't like it. Don't know why he just like couldn't make it here. So he went to he went to England and started doing the more like psychedelic blues shit and made it huge in England and then brought it back to the states and yeah. like made it really big in the states. 
got too big for his britches, did too many drugs, died, and then became this massive uh, sensation. Yeah. And but like his blues stuff is unbelievable. Like uh, from from just like the standpoint how many, of how many albums traditional play. I think there's two maybe of like the straight blues stuff, but there's a lot of mixed, Oh no, I mean like a oh, total. All together. Ooh, I'm not sure. It's like, I know that they're releasing oh. an a new one, I think, this year of like unreleased material, which I'm kind of curious so about because it's fucking 2018. Unreleased Jimmy s- split with Tupac, right? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, is he <laughs> is he living on the island too? Is <laughs> yeah, fucking Tupac who released what like 20 albums after his death of unreleased material. That dude's still alive. I don't I don't give it, I don't care what anybody says. That dude's still alive. And uh, and I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if he's still alive. <laughs> that, man i just it breaks my heart because they'll do like collaborations with like modern rappers on new like tupac albums yeah and you know it's just like previously recorded tupac and it's like yeah i was on the tupac song yeah he was dead for it but yeah i, I was i was on that song with tupac i think kind of i think that stuff's really weird you and know, they like leave the dead dead people's music out of it but when it makes a lot of money yeah, yeah like, that's what it's about you're you're uh what, what was it like a tenth of a cent on spotify yeah that's what the companies are looking for <laughs> but uh no you know what reminds me that i read about recently what people don't know the way you said about how jimmy when he came out those blues things didn't mean shit at the time like he just got shit on yeah. that's the same exact fucking thing that happened with velvet underground and nico that album what I didn't know, that album was a completely fucking lucky mistake. It was a completely fucking lucky mistake because I read about it like Nico, by the way, which people don't know because a lot of people, I mean, I just love them no matter what. I'm into the music. But now there's everybody nitpicking, oh, well, who would they vote for? Oh, well, will they, what were they invo- well, you know, involved with? Were they vegan? Were they this? You know, just they nitpick at all this shit. They were great fucking musicians, but... What people don't know is Nico was uh, German and she was super fucking like Ary- pro Aryan race. I guess like she uh, <laughs> oh. she she went to dinner with one of uh, so so here's what happened. Nico came out. She was like a really popular model since she was little, um, and she, she was modeling since like, I think like f- ten years old. That's weird to be really popular. Like to be a really popular model at the age of ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, that is kind of. She and, yeah, and, and one of the songs What's was the about age of consent in Germany. <laughs> she, she, one of the songs was about she ended up getting like raped at fourteen at like oh, a um, army. I, I um, want to take that joke back now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any, anyways, um, she. Um, Lou, Lou Reed was like doing his own fucking thing. He's like, we got Velvet Underground. We're doing our own shit. He wasn't really that well known. He was just like this side fucking thing that nobody knew about, like a local band opening for whatever, you know. And then shiny toy guns. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they would have been. They definitely would have been better than that, right? Oh, to any <laughs> anyone. Uh, I've heard. I've heard drunk homeless men sing better than than shiny toy guns did that night. But uh, I hope they never see this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it might, we might get we might get promotion for that, you know. Right? <laughs> like fuck yeah, these royalties. Guys. We got famous through shiny toy guns. They're dead right now. We still did. <laughs> yeah, but any, anyways, um, so so what happened? I, for, I forget how the story goes. Somebody in the record industry was really nuts about Velvet Underground, and they were like, you know, hey, we really we kind of want. Uh, Nico kind of faded away uh, with her modeling shit. So she's like, we kind of want to get her big in this whole hippie movement to pr- uh, like promote her shit. So they're like, we want her to be on your album. Lou Reed's like, wait a minute, I heard about her bullshit. You know, like, like they, I think when she went out to, uh, to dinner with a publicist, there was like two black people dining and she just beat the shit out of them. She's like, I won't dine with black people. And, and so, 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 so Lou Reed's like, dude, I'm fucking Jewish and you want this, Aryan race person to be in our fucking band, you know? And uh they were gonna pay really well. So he's like, fuck it, I'll do it. And the funny thing is the label, the guy who owned the label was gonna pay Lou Reed really well. But the guy who owned the label really wanted to get uh he didn't want to make an album. He wanted to make an art experience for Ooh. sort of like an art avant-garde hippie thing. 
So he was only going to take Andy Warhol's paintings as payment and let Andy Warhol take over the project. And that's why that... Fucking what? Yeah. So that so I that's why any of that shit. Yeah, I didn't I didn't that's crazy, right? I mean and that that's why that cover is that fucking banana, you know. I I guess that makes sense. So wait, now. hang on. Yeah. So they're paying Lou Reed and now well, well, the head they, of the company well, 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 no, well, no, they were going to pay Nico and say, hey, we can save your career if you make an album with these people. And Lou Reed's like, I don't want this person in the band. Why the fuck that's going to make me sell out? I'm not even doing this for money. Why do I want this German fucking model whose career is going down the shit? Right. And hey, is, you know, like a Nazi. Yeah. And they're like, all right, well, it'll pay well and it'll let you make more albums with, you know, more mu- like better quality and better um studios and shit he's like fine whatever i'll fucking do it did she ever repent in her ways or, or I, like i don't to know this day is she still a fucking nazi i yeah i don't know i i, oh, I she's alive still yeah yeah i don't know if she's alive still but. Yeah, I'm not sure, but it, but the thing that I read it was I guess just like point, hearing that. I don't know if I care that much. Yeah. Whether she's <laughs> yeah. I think she's Literally. dead. <laughs> I hope so. It was kind of cool though when they released that record. They um, you know about the peel sticker thing, right? No. It, it was like uh, they wanted because it's like oh, it's an avant-garde Andy Warhol show experience. They weren't even planning on releasing the record because they're like, oh, this is gonna go to shit. We're just doing this as like a touring art show. Because have you guys ever seen that um, live performance performance with them? No. no. Where they're like sitting in different places in the venue, kind of like the split scenes in Austin Powers, where there's different people on on different like platforms and shit. They did that, and then there's like a projector going on them. So it's supposed to be like the Blue Man Group, except Velvet Underground, you know. <laughs> and so they wanted to be judged more by the experience instead of the fucking music. And then they're like, oh well, this album is selling really well. We're gonna release it on vinyl. And you know how a banana peels, so yeah. they actually put like a peel off sticker that, like, I guess you scratch and sniff, and it smells like a banana. And <laughs> those first pressings are like worth a shitload of. Oh fucking yeah, money. I could uh, I could imagine <laughs> that that yeah that's got to be like real expensive. Oh, you now. peeled the banana, that's gonna hurt the value. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right. Did you scratch it? Can I still you smell banana it? Banana Nazi. Right. Like, do you have? Are there experts out there rating it on its banana smelliness? Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Antiques Roadshow. The smell. <laughs> the smell. Like you can, you can still waft the banana scent off the album. Mm. They have to hold it, hold it with like a velvet glove, and you know, smell it like wine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They got the one of the, like white gloves to handle the album. Yeah. Like, put it in a hyperbolic chamber. I, I, yeah, I, nothing past that. No. I uh, I actually I'm I'm looking to appraise something because I need to get rid of it. I don't give a fuck about it. I um I don't know if I ever mentioned my great aunt was a concentration camp survivor, and she, I mean we're not like Jewish or anything, but there's a shitload of non-Jews who are in the concentration camp, pretty much yeah. half of Poland, right? I mean, and uh, she, I'm pretty sure I got it from her, because yeah, I'm that fucking clueless. I don't remember anything. I don't. I, I, she gave me these uh. I'm pretty sure they're doctor's notes. I translated them. They're just blank doctor's notes that are signed by Heinrich Himmler on the back. And I don't know like where to fucking appraise them. Cause uh, <laughs> I don't know if you want to be dealing with the buyers of, yeah. of <laughs> that sort of thing. Although I do feel like at, at so, like I don't know, maybe, I feel maybe like, like a be, history museum or something would buy those. Like, well, well, I, uh, well first, first thing I said with the buyers, I think it would be worth more now. With all the shit that's going on in <laughs> Yeah, media. play the market. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, if you got anything signed by Heinrich Himmler, you can get a lot of money for that, I'm sure. Yeah. So. And, I, don't, and I, I know it's the same. Don't sing- go to their home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do this in public. <laughs> and and I, know, I know it's uh, a signature because the, the rest of the document is black and the, it, it, uh, his signature is blue and it like bleeds through the paper. That's cool. So. Can I see these? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can show you after. I was going to say, like, I'm kind of curious. Yeah. Um, funny thing is after, l- like, I, I was kind of holding on to them because I'm like, wow, this is kind of crazy. But I'm like, you know, if you were in my position, do you really want to remember that shit? Like, do you really, like, if you had a great aunt who's a survivor, it's like, dude, why the fuck? I'd, yeah. Like, I'd, oh, I would say, I would say, like, try and approach, like, the, like, a Holocaust museum. Yeah. I bet you, oh, like, oh, yeah. I was going to say, I, I tried approaching a museum and they were like, because it's a museum and we're sort of trying to... This is more for the benefit of the education of, you know, as opposed wh- to memorabilia. Yeah, 
that that we, we you can you can donate it to us. Mm. That's oh, what I fucking so because they don't want to pay for it. So maybe it's better <laughs> to go cheap to cheap bastards. Right. <laughs> yeah, spend all that money on Holocaust survivors. Right. How dare they? Yeah, go to Pawn Stars. Pawn. St- oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that I would love to watch that episode. <laughs> <laughs> like that exchange. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I think, and I'm not just saying this because I really have to pee. I think this is an appropriate time to take a quick little break. Yep. All right, we'll You're be right back. You're peeing on that history, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pissing on this whole... It, I think our podcast is an art experience. It is. You know, like the Velvet Underground. Should we all sit in different... <laughs> you, know, you know, I watched uh, Beavis and Butthead too much with Gavin... So now every like outing that we go to, like family party or like in public, he says a riddle from the show, which is, "Hey guys, what's green and red and goes at a hundred miles per hour? A frog in a blender." <laughs> oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> like, oh, Gavin, where? Did, how did you come up with that? You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, super healthy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely yeah, not serial killer shit. Yeah, yeah, right. I, um, you so got to start somewhere, you know. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. I'm rereading it, you know, yeah. like the Stephen King movie with Pennywise. Yeah. And I read it. I read most of it once before in eighth grade. So, like, I don't remember much of it, and I never finished it. And now here I am, 15, 20 years later, like, rereading it. Yeah. And it's really cool, and I'm really enjoying it. But I feel like there's a part that comes up where a kid microwaves a cat. Wh- and like, <laughs> I don't know. I just I feel like that's something that happened in the book that scarred me in a minor way. So it's like, this doesn't make sense. Where where's the kid that's gonna like be the cat killer? Like, how does he play into all this? Because I swear to God, he's there. Well, it's he's coming up. <laughs> it's Stephen King, so there has to be some fucked up kid somewhere. Okay. You you read the first edition? It, it was edited out. I yeah. God, I hope so. That's like that's like gummo, you know, hunting cats for Chinese food. <laughs> uh, there it is, man. Yeah. Every every show, there's got to be a <laughs> reference to gummo, <laughs> right? <laughs> was was there? I hope. I'm pretty sure, yeah. I hope I'm that big of a fan, man. All right, this episode is brought to you by Gummo. And I'm still friends with that guy on Facebook. That yeah. one little minor role in that one little <laughs> minor movie that he played. <laughs> I was. Uh, Facebook friends with Todd Bridges. Yeah. Who played Willis? Yeah. Did I talk about this before? No. That on Facebook I found Todd Bridges, the actor that played Willis on different strokes. Yeah. And he looked exactly like Willis, but just like thirty years older. And he gained some weight. That um yeah. And so just for the longest time, like I was just checking out his statuses. Like, cool, that's right, Todd Bridges and I. He accepted my friend request for some reason. Uh, he has since defriended me, mm-hmm. so I was thinking of finding him again and sending one because maybe he's those like people that like does the cleanse every now and then. Um, but that was like... I think d- you should message him and say, what the fuck was I talking about, Willis? <laughs> That, that, that I'm, I'm sure. He, I'm sure he's not sick of that. <laughs> that. That was man when you were saying talking about his statuses. I'm sure at least once on every status he posts, someone goes, "What you talking about, Willis?" <laughs> <laughs> no, because that wasn't his line. I know it wasn't his line, <laughs> but but yeah, I bet you it gets sent Gary to him, <laughs> said to him all, all the time. Yeah, that's 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 yeah. another line to add to the most, you know, miss. What was it? The the lines that are uh, most misquoted or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, Luke, I am your father. and If you book them, it's I will come, not they will come. They will come is from Wayne's World 2, actually, because they, par- they like make fun of Field's Dreams in w- Wayne's World 2. Huh. So maybe that's how they got it mixed up. Maybe. I don't know. I messed it up earlier when we were talking about Field of Dreams because that's something I guess we talk about. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> but we're we're sponsored by Iowa. That's right. <laughs> the, the whole state of Iowa. Yeah, man. I was thinking about. It. I'm like, man, I was pretty close. Should I drive all the way out to the actual field of dreams for my five second high of 
this was in a movie. I don't even give a fuck about baseball. And then drive back. You know? <laughs> do some donuts. <laughs> yeah, have a good time. Fucking... Make the news for a week. Have you ever seen that movie, John? No, I haven't. I, re- I recently saw it. It's a pretty fucking good movie. And, and they built... You know what it's about, right? No. Well, it's this guy. He starts imagining professional baseball players from the 1900s appearing in his cornfield so he builds a baseball field and it's like somehow supposed to solve his relationship with his father you know? <laughs> yeah like the premise <laughs> of the movie is pretty weak if you actually think yeah, about yeah. it sure <laughs> like ghost baseball players helping him reunite with his dad john's like, totally gonna watch this one you know, <laughs> just... james earl jones comes in and says i'm not gonna help you you're crazy wait a minute i'm crazy too let so i'll go I for the ride help. yeah <laughs> Angels in the Angels in the outfield or something? No, that's that was something outfield. else. <laughs> what was the Angels in the outfield? Angels in the outfield was uh was it about uh the was it the Oakland A's where the Anaheim Angels or Anaheim Angels? Sorry, I what? Yeah, no shit, not the Oakland A's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> where like like one of I think it's one of their like outfielders gets help from these Angels to be like a, an, an amazing baseball player or some mm-hmm. shit like that. All I remember is there's a scene from it where they like lift him up to catch a fly ball. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I think it was like the pitcher that was it the pitcher? Yeah, that sees or? these Angels and they help them. That trailer was the only part of the movie that everybody was waiting for and wanted to see. You know? <laughs> Him getting picked up by the angels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There it is. That, no. There he goes. What's the other one that that, that I remember? Oh, Rookie of the Year. That was Where awesome. the kid fucks his arm up <laughs> and becomes a becomes the pitcher for the Cubs. Yeah. Is that where like, it's like, loaded like a spring? And yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, he breaks. Yeah. Is that a Disney movie? I don't know. Uh, it wasn't. I watched uh, it recently. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't Disney. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie, Cause, especially because of Marv from Home Alone is in there. What's his name? Daniel Stern. He's he's the nerdy fucking coach, mm-hmm. who's like a spot. I I, for, I forgot what he says in there. He's like uh, he has all these dumb lines. He's like, you know, if you can't bring peanuts to the hotel, you pack your suitcase full of them. It's that easy. And then he like chokes on him. <laughs> 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 character is insane <laughs> what, what's with all those horrible like baseball movies in the 90s you know? <laughs> I have no idea. it's like we're gonna we're gonna release a shitload of horrible fucking baseball movies one of them's bound to make it which is probably sandlot i would say right? yeah, sandlot yeah that's right sandlot what uh major league yeah uh rookie of the year angels in the outfield field of dreams what else was uh a league of their own was the League of Their Own the original? I thought it was Bad News 80s? Bears. Bad News Bears is eighties, I think. So baseball is yeah. timeless, is what. Yeah, we're I getting guess, at. Yeah. Quoted by James Earl Jones in <laughs> Field of Dreams. <laughs> baseball is timeless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I think we're misquoting again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, we're not misquoting. We're just making shit up. Yeah. A coworker asked me, what's the worst joke I've ever written? And it's baseball season. I'm more concerned about allergy season. That's and Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that's fucking funny. You're going to need those angels to lift you up and give you some motivation for better, <laughs> for better material. <laughs> angels on the stand-up stage. <laughs> The, uh, the very first time I ever did stand-up was in a friend's backyard. She was hosting a bonfire, and, like, I blacked out for a portion of it, and, like, I puked on my shirt, and, like, I just had this shirt slung over my shoulder for the night. Yeah. And I was sitting there, and I just got to telling jokes, and apparently, because this is what people told me, like, I just said, like, thank you, you've been great, and I just, like, left the party and, like, went home. and so i'm like walking home i'm bare chested just like this vomity shirt over my shoulder and i run into a friend from high school and he says hey man you want to smoke a blunt and i like slur something out like i always smoke blunts so i get in his car and then i have like a moment of lucidity and i say you know what dude i'm gonna pass on the blunt will you take me home and he was like, yeah. And then he like took me home 
I threw my shirt in my hamper and like poured like cologne on it because you know like all the vomit <laughs> and everything. And I uh, I'm hanging out with my friends the next day and they're like, dude, that cheeseburger joke you told was so fucking funny. And I was like, cheeseburger joke? What are you talking about? And they're like, yeah, dude, you were just like just telling jokes and talking and then you thanked us and then like you just left and i was like was it good and they're like yeah it was pretty good and i was like cool so <laughs> i'm gonna build a career off of this yeah. now. <laughs> so that was your inspiration story basically. yeah that's that's right that's humble beginnings so speaking of um i guess just goofy baseball shit <laughs> i re- i remember like i think like five years ago um it, I don't know how to explain the humor of it, but it was sort of like I was just getting into that whole psych scene. All these like other bands from other states are like, "Yeah, man, your band's awesome. We should like play together." And all. so they, so I was like looked upon as like this fucking, you know, this new Sid Barrett type Paul Piper shit, you know. So I um, uh, I would just my humor is usually like just plain fucking ridiculous. I'm not looking to. F- the stuff that makes me laugh the most is when I'm just plain ridiculous, not looking to offend anybody. And there was like that whole uh, controversy about how Cleveland Indians need to change their logo of the, the na- there's like a Native American smiling with a feather in his head. Yeah. You know? well, is yeah. it the Atlanta Braves? Is no. No, Braves is the, the, uh, is the um, tomahawk. Yeah. Yeah. There, I mean, there's, there's way, there's way too many. The Blackhawks. Like, yeah, there's, there's the way Washington too many Redskins. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like that was uh, just like a plate. The Browns, anyone? Yeah. Which, by the way, there's, was there's actually of... was actually a reference to uh, to Native Americans, I believe. It was not. Maybe just it was like. Me- uh, wouldn't that be Mexicans, not Indians? Because uh, Indians I'm Mesoamerican. Be... Oh, the Reds. I don't know. <laughs> isn't there? Isn't there the Reds? Or just I'm thinking of Redskins, Redskins. maybe. Well, any Which, and, I think still there is not Reds. cool. That that's the Cincinnati Reds. Wait, yeah, actually, that does sound. I think isn't that a thing? John, our baseball expert. I have no idea. All right, thank you, John. <laughs> well, so I was trying to like pitch this funny joke, half trying to like irk people, but then I'm like, actually, that'd be a good idea. I put, hey man, I think we would all get along if we got rid of the Native American keep the name Cleveland Indians and just have like a cartoon Ravi Shankar playing a sitar for the baseball thing, you know? <laughs> sure. And then like, <laughs> let's piss off another ethnic group. <laughs> and then like the, no, not them. You, we were talking about you. <laughs> yeah. Well, cause then, the well, real ones. Cause I, I thought the, the offensive part was that they're Native Americans. They're not Indians. I thought the name Indian was the one that's, that's controversial. And then I'm like, man, that'd be kind of cool. Like baseball uniforms, like Bollywood themed, you know? <laughs> so like sorry is like a bunch of like yeah a lot more singing and dancing at baseball games you get like a turban helmet you know <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't protect much for the concussions but yeah. damn does it look good <laughs> that remind that reminds me of oh uh, I, I read like wikipedia every day just random shit at work and one of the things was i love reading the <laughs> recent deaths because I'm like, oh, hey, how is this person? <laughs> but let's see how this doesn't get dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I love I love reading it because. Did you tell uh, this to the CEO? <laughs> <laughs> so Someday your, your name's going to be a- on a- Actually, the, I, I told him. I didn't mean to tell him. I was just talking to myself on the shitter. And he heard me. <laughs> Phil, is that you? <laughs> uh, no, I'm pooping. <laughs> <laughs> I love reading recent deaths, by the way. Where's the paper? <laughs> No, but I'm, I I I like stop, it. Just start dropping off the obit section just on your desk. Like, be like, I didn't need this part here. <laughs> here you go, Phil. I know it's your favorite. They're they're just gonna update that on my resume. Don't don't pay attention to his jokes, to his humor. Don't do it. He's a great employee. Just don't do it. Hi, welcome to the company. That's Phil. He reads obituaries. Okay. Well, That's- anyway, I I like reading them because it shows you how. It, like well, for example, there'll be somebody that you widely hear about. I don't know, say Prince or David Bowie, and you know you'll kind of know just because of like talk and gossip. Like, why was this person significant? And then like randomly, it'll say like, "Oh, uh, well, who the fuck is this person? Why does it, you know not? Oh, it doesn't matter that this person died. It's just like why? 
are they posting about this person? What makes him so significant to make it onto this website? And I think one of them was like a, was was like an Indian activist, and his major um, accomplishment was that he argued and had like a political movement to allow, uh, in the somehow very small group of Indian uh, chic basketball players to allow them to wear turbans during the basketball games. That was his accomplishment. So that's what we're going to remember him for. Yeah. I don't I I I didn't know that you can't take those off. Maybe at, it seems culturally not significant here. Maybe maybe yeah. it was there. I mean, I don't know. Or there are there all just people I, I don't know, it's just really funny to read those <laughs> because that's not I know that that sounds like really dumb, but a lot of them are. It's like, oh, this person thought about hey we should add erasers to pencils you know and that's <laughs> genius I, that yeah. man was a genius yeah. and then throughout history oh and now we're going to add cartoons on the side of the pencils he completely completely revolutionized i want to see that documentary yeah. right. well uh, john john came in right i'm i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure vice would cover that something like <laughs> that you know and he goes well when you make a mistake and you want to clean it up what do you do <laughs> you make a documentary on Vice. <laughs> and we just sat there, mouths gaping, just, what did he say? And that's when we knew he was onto something. <laughs> we asked Many him. years in development, you know, it, it, really got, it really got frustrating at times. They all said I was crazy. <laughs> it could never work. <laughs> How did you come up with the idea? Well, I was in high school. Actually, I was in eighth grade, but I flunked six times. I was in my car, threw my homework out the window, and burned out on it. I was like, I erased the mistakes. We need rubber on top of these wooden sticks. <laughs> but it's got to be pink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> recent deaths. <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys about our, our, like, me and Kelly's first yoga instructor, right? How he, how, how uh, our yoga sessions would be where he'd, um, you know, you're supposed to relax. Okay, the good yoga teacher, she'd have like mood music. She'd have My like man. she'd have like mood music, really relaxing environment. Everyone's quiet. Everyone's like breathing in unison. It sounds like we're on a fucking beach and the waves are going. She's tell she's like describing what we're you know, release the negative energy into the ocean. The waves come back with good energy. You're like it's perfectly in chi, you know. Is that yoga? Yeah. And 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 then this other guy, he would like the whole time, it was like, oh, we're going to do some stretches while I review movies and talk about recent deaths on Wikipedia. <laughs> no, <laughs> <try>. <laughs> I don't think he gets the philosophy very yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, downward dog. By the way, all eyes on me, four out of five stars. Did not convince me that Tupac is dead. You know? And then, and then like, all right, now we're going to do... I, I, I don't fucking know, like uh, I, I don't even know the names of the poses crouching, <laughs> crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon by the way same name of the movie three stars <laughs> didn't like the actors you know? God. Yeah. by the way the, the Eraser documentary can we call it uh, Eraser Head yeah. somehow get the rights <laughs> to that <laughs> <laughs> I like that yep so Jimmy Buffett has like this musical going on right now and it's called Escape from Margaritaville and the opening night the bar ran out of margaritas and that's just like come People on riot <laughs> <laughs> like you had one fucking job like and you can't do that man I, I, I was talking to one of my buddies about this about how I, I need to I need to figure out how to tap into that Jimmy Buffett market like, uh, cause you know, there's gonna be a void once he dies, mm -hmm. and those people, they need, they yeah, need they somewhere need to party. To yeah, need <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone's got to pick the torch. Oh, there we go. I'm just gonna do Jimmy Buffett covers for the rest of my life. Are you the one? Are you the chosen one? Maybe. To keep his legacy alive. If you book them, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> Don't run out of margaritas. I'm writing uh, 
a new song, Margarita Town. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it's a, a bluegrass. I got nothing on it. <laughs> but no, that was, <laughs> I'm going like to stop head. before this gets worse. I like where your head was at. Population. What do you think the title should be, John? Margarita what? <laughs> I don't know. All right, I'd say Margarita City. Well, I could I could play off of my Italian heritage and say Margarita Villa. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was c- kind of it reminds me of just like Italian and Italian her- heritage, like um, heritage. Um, I really fucking love cannolis. Oh yeah! And I, like one of the first, like I've been really. I mentioned on another show, I'm like really trying to get on Gavin because he's got some catching up to do. Like, you know, moms are really kind of like, no, do whatever you want. You just, you just have to care about yourself. You know, there's little discipline. So I told him, I'm like Gavin. Oftentimes I feel guilty because I'm like, ah, oh, this kid, he's got a lot of catching up to do. How do I tell him like if I'm being too hard? And one day I think we were watching. I was telling, I'm, I'm like, just let me know. When I when I get too harsh or too mean, so he was gonna uh, do the Bart Simpson thing. Don't have a cow, man. Like, no, don't ever call me man. Call me don't have a cow, dad, or just chill out, dad. And I I think I was like really mad one day, so he didn't want to say either because he think I would get mad at that. So instead of saying like you know chill out or you know what's your fucking problem or something, he's tried to say something more probably and said. Did you run out of cannolis? <laughs> 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 so I love the kid for that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. You ever had, have you ever made or seen cannolis be made before? No. Oh my god. Is it magic? Uh, no, it's disgusting. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I uh I've made them before. Um and the the ratio of uh ricotta cheese to sugar is basically 50-50. I'm not sure what that means. That mean like for, for I, <laughs> there are pounds of sugar in a batch of cannolis. It's like your eggnog. Oh, <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Oh shit! It is cheese and sugar. But but like more than you think there is. Way more than you <laughs> think there is. Even, even though it doesn't taste like there's a shit. No, it doesn't yeah. taste like there's a shit ton in there. There is a shit ton in wow. there. Wow. Oh yeah. You like, mean like the filling of a cannoli? The filling yeah. of a cannoli it's is just ricotta is, and it's just ricotta cheese and sugar, pretty really? much. Like uh, a few various other things, depending on how creative you want to get. But I thought it was just like a uh, more liquefied like cheese that you have in cheesecake. No, it's a, it's straight ricotta <laughs> cheese and sugar. <laughs> yeah, they're delicious. Don't like, don't get me wrong, and super easy to make. Expensive though, because ricotta cheese is fucking expensive. But, but ricotta is so good. It is. It is very good. I am a fan. You got your shades on? Yeah, dude. It's about that time. I uh, decided to take my hat off because I feel like I kept bonking the microphone. Yeah. But then you know now there's bright lights and just keeping everything balanced. Hell yeah, man! It's like you look like Randy Newman in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Show people got no reason. <laughs> so I take my head off and now I start hitting the microphone with my nose. <laughs> so <laughs> this is just going great. That that's another random fuck that I run <laughs> read about on Wikipedia. Oh, <laughs> Randy, Randy Newman. Newman. Yeah. Uh, d- 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 Wait, one did of he die recently? No, I, well, no, no. Oh, I, I'm just like, hey, <laughs> you <laughs> got a friend in me. Yeah. No, it was just a, a random fuck I wanted to read about online, and they and they said like that there was some um, very little. Uh, interest <laughs> <laughs> that no no that short people song was like the one song that he wrote that actually meant something like <laughs> like like everything else was like oh i'm gonna make this for a fucking kids movie and make money and it doesn't mean shit but i guess that short people song was like and people he, hate that song yeah. people hate that song so much <laughs> this is it <laughs> this is my masterpiece <laughs> did you ever see will sasso do do um him on Mad, Mad TV. No. Ran, uh, I'm gonna rate some songs. And, and, and I forgot. <laughs> it, was, it was something. It was like I forgot what it was. It was something that he would never do. I, it was something like gruesome. Like I don't know, a Vietnam movie. We're gonna get shot by bombs. Gonna keep standing up for the USA. 
So that like, <laughs> it's it, it's just uh, he he did a great. J- I love Will Sasso. I just realized it recently because <laughs> I was watching old clips of him like Arnold, The Rock, fucking uh, The Sopranos. <laughs> I don't know. He's fuck. Did you see that? You saw that shit with him and in that Arnold video, right? No. That was like oh. last year. He um. You you guys know who Will Sasso is, right? Mad TV. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, he's in some. Uh, was Frank Caliendo on Frank or on Mad TV as well? I'm not sure. That sounds really familiar. Possibly. I think I get them confused. I definitely know both of those names, but yeah. I can't place a lot. Will what, Sasso. What does Will Sasso do now? I don't think he does. I think he just does stand up, and that's that's what was funny is he's like completely not relevant anymore. And like a year ago, he just he was. I think this is what happened. He was touring in some uh, cold area. I don't know if it was Alaska or Antarctica. I I, I don't know. It was some cold fucking place. <laughs> is there a venue in Antarctica? <laughs> yeah. That one venue in the igloo. <laughs> It's called the igloo for the penguins. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. He's just become the actual Great the aunt. penguin from Dark Knight. <laughs> no, no, but he um, you know how they have that face uh manager thing on apps where you can like put a kitty's nose. And, yeah. And the, yeah. Yeah. Well, he he got some weird app where you can have Arnold's face on you, <laughs> and he does like awesome Arnold impressions. So he's just walking around in this like cold, fucking. Like like just random places, and he, he had to like stay in this like in say Alaska. He had to stay there for like two days, to not do any stand up, and they didn't have anything to do. So he just walk around. Hey, I'm a, I'm a, I look at the snowplow. It's like a snowplow back at home, but it's in the Arctic. And then he go up to like a group of people. Hey, these are like regular people, but I I'm very pleasant to meet them because they're they're people from. And they're like, we're from Vermont. No, you're from the Arctic. <laughs> <laughs> and he just keeps do- doing the same thing. And it, I don't know. It was really funny. It was just fucking random for him to just come out of nowhere and just make a viral video like that. The he governator. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right? Oh, yeah. Governator. The governor. Very progressive on the environment. Do you guys have ever to any of your places where you live, have people come up to you to your door and ask you, hey, would you like to switch to green turbines? No. You never had that shit? I no. I, I oh, my not. God. They fucking do that company, whoever it is, they just hire anybody off the street. Because, like, the first week I moved in here, there's this kid, looks like fucking Chief Keef, like torn up, bleached white pants, long-ass fucking dreads and braids, Looking like he's about to break into my house because he's 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 he was like checking my door and shit. I'm like, yeah, are you like the open house is done? We're moving in. He's like, no, no, I'm here to ask if you'd like to switch to green energy. I'm like, I haven't even fucking lived here yet, man. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 then they're like, oh yeah, yeah, but here, let me let me like, I I never um, like you know when I lived at a uh, condo before. I kind of just paid like one bill altogether to the la- you know landlord, mm-hmm. but now it's like uh, Kelly takes care of like all I care I take care of mortgage she takes care of all the little water gas you know electricity, so I'm like wait did we not pay something? Oh you have and you're probably play- paying way more because let me tell you about green turbines. <laughs> oh you played right into the yeah, pitch. <laughs> yeah and I'm like carrying a fucking half a couch. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, tell me more. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and Kelly is, I'm like, what the fuck? Did we not pay something? Are we just not going to have electricity? Cause this guy's really pushing this green energy shit on me. And then, and then that same week I go to Best Buy to buy this camera and there's a guy at Best Buy pitching the same shit. Just a random fucking like, like redneck. He has, he has that shit where uh half your face is red. Not Two Face, <laughs> no. <laughs> Billy Corgan has it on his hand. Oh, you know, that's t- from severe burns. I don't know. I don't think it's br- it's like a skin or condition. A, where or he like has, a birthmark. Yeah, it's like a red birth. Yeah, he has like a face half red face. I'm like, yeah, has Eczema? the gre- possibly. Is it like pigmentation? Because I know I, there's a dude who works the uh, there's a there's a uh, burger joint. In Wheaton, that's yeah. been there forever and ever. One of their cooks like has like had like oil burns, uh, severe oil burns <laughs> oh on his face, God. and like 
It next. adds to the flavor, right? Oh, dude, he's the best. He's the best cook, in the- and that place has been like voted one of the like one of the best burger joints in uh, the Chicagoland area for like years. We wow. has everything, doesn't it? Oh God, it is awful. It was the worst place to grow up. Better than your shit town. Wheaton. <laughs> oh, you know, I uh <laughs> that, that might be the tagline, but we were unincorporated, so they they uh they looked down on us. Well, naturally. It's because we paid Winfield taxes, they can go fuck themselves. <laughs> we didn't need sidewalks. Man, My question it. is, do you need green energy? <laughs> I mean, we should we should all switch to green energy, but but yeah, I don't know how that works and uh, Does I usually Wheaton just have don't green answer energy. The door. That that's the that's the uh main focus in this question. <laughs> Wheaton probably fucking not. Wheaton probably burns burns coal still, but yeah. I don't. Need, did you ever hear like the arguments anybody about like about turbine energy, about how like they don't want to do it, it because the animal activists because because uh, I guess birds fly into them. Well, it's bad. It's really bad for migratory bird patterns in certain places, and there's this major concern that because uh, a lot of the talk has been doing it in the oceans and like offshore. Yeah. And there's a bunch of like uh like oceanic scientists are going no you can't like you can't do that because you will destroy like the the wind streams they're like you know that whole thing that drives weather patterns and keeps the climate this way and like keeps everything going like if you take all of the energy from that in the ocean like you will stagnate your climate and you will essentially destroy the planet yeah yeah i was reading about that i'm like holy shit i that is i didn't i would never have thought about that Sounds like something Trump or Kim Jong Un's new friendship will be interested in. Nah, it's just offshore drilling and nuclear tests. <laughs> Those are fine. <laughs> Going to take over the world with tie binds, or maybe that was Bernie Sanders' accent. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying <laughs> yeah, anymore. Does. That sounds more like a Bernie Sanders scheme than uh, <laughs> than a Donald Trump yeah. one. A scheme? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess scheme is the, the world <laughs> the wrong term for <laughs> Bernie Sanders, but climate change wants to kill us. We're coming back with turbines. <laughs> I thought they would be they they wouldn't want to do that because animals would get cut up in there, or sliced and diced and shit. That's a big thing with it. Is it's it is it's like really bad for birds, but everything is really bad for birds. Like light pollution is a huge problem for birds. Sound pollution, skyscrapers, skyscrapers like everything we do is bad for birds. They're a fragile animal. They are, but they are. Quite oh, literally, the canary in the in the uh, mine. They seem to thrive in Chicago. <sighs> Only certain types, but it fucks with like their, <laughs> like it fucks with all the migratory. So all like the, or majority of the native birds, like have a lot of difficulty in like Chicago land. That's why there's a huge, there's actually like a huge um, prairie conservation movement in the Chicago land area in particular. Because of the, like preserving the habitats for native birds that are like uh, that are really freaking out necessary for the for like the environment or like this localized environment. I learned all yeah. that. I was I was I, I learned all about this. I took a, a, a couple classes on it. But. UIS? No, actually, COD. Uh, UTI. Mm. <laughs> I, had who, who, uh, I had a friend who graduated from UTI. And I used to drive by that building and laugh just yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I'm a fucking child. Yeah, and every time I drive past, I'd be like, <laughs> "Yeah, we we talked about this about our about our UTI segment, you mm-hmm. know. You know what? You know that whole bird thing. What reminds me of like, because I I always think about this how, you know, everybody. I'm recently pretty trying to pr- trying to mature and just not get involved in people's shit anymore. But I was thinking about how like people, you know, constantly rag on like millennial generation and millennials. And it's like, dude, yeah, you don't know how fucking hard it was. Like today I went to buy, try and buy a new jacket at, um, to get a new, uh, combat jacket from an army surplus. And I'm like, dude, I would never fucking know about this place in the middle of 20 miles away from me. If I didn't have a GPS or I didn't have online, you just have to be like, oh, hey, I'm going to ask Zach. You go, you know any good army surplus stores? You know any army surplus yeah. stores, John? You know, I actually and, do. There's one off Roosevelt Road. In, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the good one. I, I don't I don't want to drive all the way to the city, and, and that and that's the one I wanted to go. The one that I went to, dude. It it was called Trader Joseph's Army Surplus, 
And it was just like this guy's fucking trailer filled with <laughs> army shit. The, the first army is on, is on Roosevelt Road in Lombard. Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know why I know that, but, well, well, the re- but I do. <laughs> well, 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 the, well, the reason why I bring this up is like um, I was thinking about how when people would have uh, way more different hobbies. Do hobbies even fucking exist anymore? Do kids even do shit like model cars or, or, or what, sports maybe? And I was thinking about how you were saying birds. Like how the fuck is bird watching now? Kid just like holds up his phone. What kind of bird is Oh, yep, I got it. I saw it. Day accomplished. There, yeah. From from my understanding, I, I listened to uh, you know, judge me if you want. I listened to a segment on NPR about Ooh. birding, Dude. and uh, I judge you. I'm but, judging. You. That's fine. I like it. But, <laughs> but anyway, uh, about birding and about how apparently like it's still like a huge huge community in the United yeah. States. Well, that's good. The, they were talking about there's like a. I don't know, some like mutated cardinal in some place in like Kansas or some shit that's like yeah. different color, and they're like they won't release uh, the location of the house that it's like nesting at because like I can't remember it was like three years ago there was like a rare bird that was nesting at this one house in Mississippi I think and they like gave out the address of it and like forty thousand people showed up to see it. <laughs> They said that they that they were able to track the uh, the economic boost that it gave the town <laughs> because oh of God. all these birders showing up. Is that what they're called, birders? That's a, I I've heard the term birders and birding. I don't know. I'm not part of the community, so right. <laughs> not but entirely see, like, sure. See, like I don't know if it's gotten better with like this whole new generation or where, because when I was a kid. I remember I was, you know, when you're a kid, you're bored as fuck. You don't know what, to, you can only go so far without your parents yelling at you. I was like, oh, I heard bird watching is a hobby. I'm going to try and find this bird in the, you know, 20 feet of my fucking backyard. And these, the books that used to have that shit, it was like, it was all black and white. So all the birds looked the same. <laughs> yeah, right? Like the field guides. <laughs> yeah. I didn't seen, do a great job with, uh, with description. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I've seen every single part of this fucking book every bird in this thing you know you know what's really crazy um my friend at work (laughs) showed me this article i don't know i i liked it because it was incredibly ridiculous there's this you know how there's a shitload of like really old school um mongolian tribes still living like just off grid in in asia i didn't know that (laughs) that's news to me (laughs) yeah yeah no there's not offhand knowledge (laughs) john did you did you know about the mongolians no i had no idea all right no no they're they're still um they're still uh well it was like that movie that i mentioned before i I don't know if i mentioned it before have you ever heard well i'm not going to trail off topic angels in the outfield yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. About it earlier. yeah i'm holding up the mongolians we're gonna survive you know? <laughs> no but um there's uh there's still like these tribal random people uh li- living out uh off grid and they were sort of you know when you like go hunting you're you're looking from far away uh to see like any movement at all to see like w- if you can shoot something if it's edible so they were looking far away and apparently they didn't find out till at the end their mistake that there was a really really rare Sib- uh not Siberian just a uh just the average tiger but the thing was that um something was messed up where the his stripes were reversed so instead of being more yellow and black stripes he was more like black with yellow stripes or something That's really cool. It was it was a rare like some I don't know some genetic weird thing but and they killed the fuck out of that is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know why? Because they asked him why. Like, what well, did you do it for the coat? No, they were following it for two weeks because they claimed it was shape shifting, so they thought it was like a UFO alien species. Naturally. So they're like, Oh and, and and then and then after they kill him, they're like, um Oh, so guess what? This was like there's only like two other of these left on Earth. You probably made them extinct. They're like Oh, we thought it was shape shifting. Whatever, we'll move on. <laughs> 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 Man, if you had been in our shoes, and, 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 you, and, and you know what I love too is the picture that they show. Like they make it seem like this is a very civil sort of conversation. Like, dude, you fucked up. This was you made this species extinct because you fucking thought it was shape shifting. But instead, the article picture is just like they're, they're in this like factory building, and there's an I beam, and its carcass is just hanging over the beam. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
It's like, oh yeah, I want to read this article, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't sugarcoat that much. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna take off. All right. All right. All right. Say nothing. Say Is nothing. Thank you for joining us. Out? That uh, no, we? I. Yeah. You want us? We could we could break and then come back in. Whatever you guys want to do. All right, perfect. So we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, say nothing. We'll be gone. Is this the